Collider Live, ladies and gentlemen, on a Wednesday, September 25th, the year of our Lord, 2019. Welcome back, everyone, to the show. And joining us today, Traffic Light, not stopping him today. He's mm-hmm. here, Josh McCougar. He'll get into that in a bit. Yeah. In the, he's not. He is the rebellion, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mark Yodius Rileyist. Yes, I am. Uh, we've got Cody Hall in the booth. Two Face, uh, Roxy Straight Stryer, up. and returning to the show, <laughs> ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Feels like. Hey, motherfucking Alex. Hey, yeah, Alex. Otherwise known as <laughs> Chips. <laughs> otherwise known as Time Code. <laughs> Time Everybody's time code so pretty... excited for the time code. Alex, Alex, do you like the nickname time code? Because I like that also. Uh, I, I like it, but I think it works more for a time code better. Time oh, code I've been oh, yeah, doing yeah, the time yeah, codes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right, it's been right. gone. Oh, you have? Yeah. yeah. Oh, Cody, right. pay attention to anything I do. No. Right. No, no. I didn't time even Cody know. is fantastic. Time Cody is pretty good. But right, Time Cop 2, Time Code, is actually a pretty good name. That for is good. So what happened to your face? I don't know. What do you mean? It is... I've never had this feeling before. You know when you have pins and needles in your arm, your leg, whatever? It falls asleep. It's yeah. in half of my face. From here over and then around to the back of the middle of my you neck. Get a shot it's like, or something? No, not, uh, mm-mm. no. I've never gotten anything in my face. I, I woke up, it was fine, Botox. and then I was getting ready. Yeah. yeah. Well, if it was Botox, I'd Roxy's probably be actually 43 better. years old. Uh, I don't know. It's so, it's bizarre. I keep, like, touching it to make it sure it's it there. Is it numb? It's Does it completely hurt? numb. It doesn't hurt. It's not, it's numb in the way that it's tingling. Right. Can you slap yourself in I've the been face? trying to. I, I've been reading articles, which is the dumbest shit you can do when you have <laughs> well, an ailment. If Makuga was sitting next to you, he probably would have slapped you. Right? Yeah, my yeah, bad. Yeah, but I don't think it would have worked. No. Do you, um... Do you, it may have pinched a nerve, perhaps? Well, I've been, you guys know how when I turn, I black out a lot? No. I told you guys that. I told you guys that. That That one time when I was in that lot of pain. That might be what it is. You might have pinched something in the neck. So when I turn, my whole life I turn, I black out. There's something like, I don't know, I must have some weird nerve system. Thing. Does it hurt when you do it? Um, yeah. Oh, if, remember that one. Remember that one time when I was sitting here and I was like, ah, oh, and oh. you guys were like, what the fuck was that? And then you just. And went. I was like, it's fine, it's fine. Right. So where do you forward. go? Do you go to, like Pluto or something? No, or? it just like <laughs> goes like it's it's like I watch like blood like dark blood rush down my oh, face, but it's it's that's not what's happening. So it's been happening so much recently. So I. Feel Doreen like is on the show here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah apparently. This can't be good. Can you? Yeah. Did you go to the doctor? Yeah, I was going. I like don't like to. You do should. It. I'll tell I you know. something different <laughs> yeah, that I'm realizing, <laughs> what is um, it? and I think that you'll you'll agree to this. Okay. McCook and I have been on point together lately. You sure? Like we were talking yesterday. We're just like like we in unison had said a couple things yesterday. Whatever it was. <laughs> go to the I doctor. think it was. It, I it will go to the doctor is a definite. <laughs> but I think that uh, it, and, and it, we it we worked out even better than we were seeing Rambo together. Oh yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it it helped. It it always helped. We were already good friends, but I think now we're Rambo. We're, we're blooded. Changed blooded the whole life. thing. My dad called me this morning and he's like. Your mom told me that uh, Sylvester Stallone's your new best friend. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, Dad. Accurate, it's, yeah. true. It's, it's true. It's great. Yeah. Um, I had a really weird, disturbing dream last night. Ooh, nightmare really or dream? I had a weird one, too. but It, it was a probably a bit of a nightmare. Um, I was in some apartment where people were passed out, hammered, you know, doing something. I was trying to find my way out, and I couldn't find my way out. And then the lights kind of went out, and it felt like a horror movie. But I was trying to not wake anybody up, and I was looking for my keys, and I was looking for everything. And there were people sleeping on the couch. And then, strangely enough, on the couch is two people. One of them, I'm pretty sure they were both Dean from, from cool. ba- Bachelor oh, cool. and Bachelor. Pretty sure they were both of them, right? They're laying, <laughs> but there's one, maybe it was Evil Dean, the other one, and they're hitting each other. And the other Evil one, Dean. the one on the other side of the couch, is laughing, and he takes out like a knife and sort of stabbing him in the chest, but laughing like ah, it's like a funny thing. And I'm like, the Rambo. I'm like, he's gonna die. That's right. And then I left. Not funny. I know. And then I left, and I'm like, that. I, what does that mean? What do you mean? mean, kind of a nightmare? It's a nightmare. <laughs> I know, but I mean, but I mean, it, it, I guess, <laughs> I guess, because it didn't happen to yeah. me. Yeah. Um, I was, I was watching it from from uh, away. But a like, lot of yeah. bad things that don't happen to you are still right. bad but it, things. But it was weird. It wasn't like he was doing the. Like the guy was clearly doing a heinous thing, right? But he's yeah. laughing. But he, it was like the way like if I would sl- I'd slap Makuga in the head and go ah, and he's like ah, oh, you dick, right? And that's the way they both were reacting. And I'm like, but he's gonna die. <laughs> it, it was it was really why disturbing. do you leave? Because he didn't want to get stabbed. Oh. He yeah. took off. Maybe Makes it's sense. Halloween Horror Nights. I don't we're getting know. ready. Maybe. I what does like that mean? Filtering in. What does that mean? I don't know. I I, know. I told Amanda like. She forgets a lot of things that I tell her, which makes sense. Uh, and I was like, she's like, what are we doing Thursday? I was like, no, I have to go to Halloween Horror Night. She's like, oh, right. All right, I'll sleep on the couch or Smart. the guest room. Smart. She- <laughs> I think I know what it is, though. I think I figured it out, even as you were telling that story. Mm. I think that Bad Dean was was the audience 
telling us to stop talking about Bachelor in Paradise. That could have uh, been it. And maybe they're just they, but, and, and good Dean was us. Or, and they or were Bachelor stabbing in Paradise. Us. Oh. And they're yeah, stabbing, stop talking yeah. about it. Totally. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, it is uh, it is other you things. You were pretty high up there for a second. Like You were up on your throne that you just dropped. I know. I yeah. didn't want to do that. But while like we that. are talking about uh, Halloween Horror Nights, so just briefly, don't yes. forget that I didn't understand your directions at all. Uh, so, uh, well, why don't you just gonna... go with me? Okay. Just come with yeah, me. Okay. Just meet come meet here. me here and then I'll, I'll I don't drive. want to come all the way over here, though, when I'm going to be on our side. Well, I'm not going to be. I know. So but I'm sorry. Do you want to, you can meet with Julie. I just need, I just need to uh, you two understand. Can go. Here's something else for you. Is Julie coming? Yeah. Wait, I, I'm, I got something new for you yeah. to try to do. Okay. Please listen. Um, I'm going to follow you. Yes, okay. that's fine. But you, what you should do, do you ever do this? Because I'm thinking this this has helped me with directions better than Waze. I think Waze is horrendous, to be honest with you. I think, it, tr- it's it really trying to kill is. Me. I think, sure, I think yeah. Waze is atrocious. Waze I think puts every, you, it, they, like every where you Uber, don't have a light, you have to turn yeah. left, and there's cars everywhere. Every time, I hate them. Every time the Uber, I'm on an Uber, and he says Waze, I go, don't do Waze, do this. Do Google. So oh, just ask Siri. You got an iPhone, right? Yeah, just, I don't know if I ever set her up. But but either way, all you got to do is, hey, Siri, I need directions to say the address, and then it will tell you, you plug the phone in, and she'll tell you exactly where to go, and you'll get there in the time that you need to, and not stupid ways taking the well, five. My to uncle get calls okay, it so was like, Hey, Siri, yeah. was I need directions to Universal. No, no, not like that. I'll teach you later. I didn't do anything. So, hey, sorry. Siri. You have to hold the button. Okay, no, wait. Some, see, sometimes you don't have to. Uh, not yeah. on this phone. Hey, Siri. I oh, need that voice for today. What's going to on? Universal. With you? Yeah, what are you doing? Hey, Is that like. Six-year-old Roxy. Hey, hey Siri. Siri. Which, hey, uni- which Universal? Tap the one you want. Give me that. Give me that phone. Give me that fucking phone, please. Getting directions. Give me. Give no, me you're. The- <laughs> I don't care. All right, <laughs> stop it. It's, oh, it's uh, doing it. It's doing it. Okay, well, don't do it right now. Don't do it right now. It says well, 13 well, minutes away. That's, that's see, and you hit go, and you get there. Now you got to try to do it from your house, plug in to get here. But isn't the same? It just brought me to the maps. I have the maps app. No, don't, l- the listen, maps app. Don't t- stop it. <laughs> your traffic light. Tell me about what happened. Here. Oh yeah. So. I'm drive so Mark texted me this morning, the yodiest of the Rileys. Yeah. And he's like, Hey, Barham's a disaster. A light fell at Olive or something. Yeah. Go another route. Forest Lawn and, and Barham just <laughs> Yeah. Damn. So But you didn't? What? Go another route? No, no, I went another route. Oh. So I took Laurel Canyon and I get to uh Chandler, which is, you know, um so Can it, you have gone another way? Hey! Oh! Oh! So <laughs> You like that. I love that. <laughs> it's more like, could you be any more lost? Yeah, there, there it is. is. Yeah. Yeah. So I get to the stoplight, and I and I was trying to run the yellow, <laughs> but then I realized if I went through the thing, I was probably going to get hit by a car, so I stopped. And this car behind me, like, slammed on their brakes, and I was like, clearly, if I'm stopping, <clears throat> you should have been stopping way long ago. Right. Yeah, and on it the was, phone? Uh-oh. Oh, yeah, clearly she was on the phone. Uh, she was in, like, an Infinity SUV. That could have been me. Maybe you're not an Infinity SUV. I, I'm just saying be nice. I did something I thought of well, you today. By the way, but finish. No, so, so <laughs> she slant, she honks at me, and I just start screaming in my mirror, like, I, like you, saying all yeah. kinds of expletives, right? Yeah. So then we start, we cut up to Burbank Boulevard, and she follows me, and I was like, uh oh, here, here we, we go. go, this is gonna be oh. a race, this is gonna be Days of Thunder when they do the rental cars, yes. and, they, and they land at the restaurant, right? So I am like sprinting down Burbank, and at this point, I'm like, if a cop pulls me over. Fuck it, it was worth it because I'm beating this woman to Burbank. Then I get stuck behind the Burbank <laughs> bus, right? I get stuck behind the Burbank bus, and she gets around me and goes oh, around no, the Burbank bus. And I was like, ah! uh, so then won. I no, I zip up behind her, and then sh- and then Burbank bullet. And now we're getting all the way into downtown Burbank. We've been fighting since like Laurel Canyon. Do you think right? she had any idea you guys were fighting? No, only I. <laughs> <laughs> so Even better. So she's now in the right hand lane. I get around. I go up. Now it's the overpass over the five, and I am I am illegally driving at this point. I get left lane and then cut across all the right lanes with my turn signal just to beat her to downtown Burbank. I got here and I was like, "Fuck yeah!" yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's well, I did. I was on the road. Good I was on the road today. Yeah. It was jam packed on uh, coming from the other side of the five. Uh, I took the and I'm and I'm driving. You on, were by the five, but I always take but I take the four hundred five uh, to the one ten to the five. Route? I don't take the five around the damned city. Yeah. Um, but anyway, <laughs> okay. the whole the okay. whole the whole damn highway was packed up, right? So yeah. you got to take your move to get over. Yes. I have the signal on, okay. and you know when the person does that move where they see you do the signal and they try to cut you off, and I'm yeah. like, no. Yeah. So I I go right in front and then I do this one, <laughs> and then uh, I uh, uh. it and I didn't know who it was, but it was who who was behind me, and it turns out to be this woman, and I look behind it and she's like. <laughs> like getting all pissed off, right? And the fact that she just got no note, and then we pull up, and I'm laughing at it, yeah. and I see her, and as she pulls off, I look and I go, 
<laughs> but to her credit, she goes. Yeah, and, and uh, it was it was it was uh, really. Uh, it was I had good. my my almost my kick kick from Boston, by the way. Yeah. Uh, kick How'd kick you know? punch punch I today. Said, yeah, somebody did. You would have. I was so pissed at this. Somebody was trying to park. It was right by Runyon Canyon. Okay. And this person is going to pull into a parking spot. Here. But this person is. wants to let them go. Where I'm like, just go around right now. We have this room. And she decides to back up, continue to back up, continue to back up. And I honk so hard oh, and no. she taps me. Oh, no. And I go, you son of a... I'm pissed now. And she looks back and goes... Oh, she's yelling at you? She's yelling at me to back up. Well, guess who's behind me? Three cars. Yeah. Right. I cannot move. And this woman is wagging the finger at me to back that, up. Is she not acknowledging she just hit you? Oh, yeah. She she acknowledged. I got out of the car and I looked and I went like that. It's like nothing happened and my car's a piece of shit anyway. So it's <laughs> what like, do you mean like this? Piece of I went shit like this. Car. It's like, you, get, you got, got me a like piece this. Of shit and car. she went like this. She looked Diesel forward and place. went. <laughs> and wouldn't look at me anymore. She just went like this. After she's wagging the finger at me and I get out of my car and tell her that she hit my car. Uh, what did we learn today? Women are awful <laughs> drivers. <laughs> I, I wasn't saying that, but... Uh, no, I got to give credit to this Infinity because she kept up with my Days of Thunder. No, like, and, we were, and, I, and a, I enjoyed it the It was a yoke. Everybody uh, at home, I made a yoke. I'm not sure if this is accurate. Can you read that, please? It's hot in here. Yeah. It's, it's so fucking hot. It's in here. so hot in and here, I and I pour it on the air. I face. literally saw it go on. Oof. And I've got my my heroes villains attire on, but it's, it feels a little hot well, for it today. He has heroes. We all have our heroes and villains. If you yeah. have not gone over there, guys, and it looks like my a lot of the Clyde Live bad. audience has done oh, that. Yeah, go to heroes heroesvillains.com heroesvillains.com. Fifteen percent off. Just by putting in Clyde or Live 15. Yo, did you or guys see? Live, live 15. 15. Excuse me, Live 15. Did you see the purse that Wendy got? Yeah. yeah. I would like that. Well, you should have requested it. I did. Today. I requested it a month ago. Oh. Well. And you can go and get it with 15%, 15% off. 15% off. And I will be doing that. <laughs> there you go. The bag is effing stunning. It's really what is It's it? like this blue leather and suede Star Wars bag that this is symbol on it. Go- mm. gorgeous. What are you pointing at me for? Nothing. I realized you, there was like there's stuff that's falling off of your hair particles. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a bug or something. Stuff that's not. falling hair, off my hair. hair. It's other hair is falling all over. No, it's on your stomach. Uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Way to point it out. You're like, what happened to your face? What's going on with your hair? Hey, hair. face hair. Hey, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's yeah, another. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> What, you can't figure out how to get to Universal? <laughs> Stupid. Yo, dumb, dumb. So here's what you do. You, you yell look at your, your phone. phone. <laughs> you go, hey, asshole. How do I get down the block? Guys, this is still the weirdest <laughs> fucking feeling. Mm. I, I don't want to. I don't want to worry you, and I'm not going to say it Uh-oh. on air. But there are certain things I've heard about people's faces going numb. Well, you might as well say it now. Oh are Jesus! Yes. Do you want to hear it on I, the air? I mean, I'm. What am I going to? Uh, it can't be worse than what I'm thinking. What do you think is worse? The weather on Mustafa uh, or or what? Mustafa. Not Mustafa. <laughs> <I said Mustafa. laughs> <laughs> Every Star Wars fan, come on, come on. <laughs> Mu- Mustafa. Mustafa. <laughs> It was it was Mustafar meets Mufasa. Or it's gonna be here. Yeah. 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 It was, <laughs> Yo, what's hotter? <laughs> and Mufasa's ass big? Or, or he? You know what? It is really hot in here. I'm gonna go check on It's so the hot in here. And we got guests coming in. Mustafa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mustafa. It's good. It's He's good. the old spice guy. Have you been to the planet Mustafa? <laughs> it's lovely know. there this it's time really of nice. year. What was your question Mustafa. gonna be? I'm just curious. It was, what, is it hot? Is here? it hotter in uh, Mustafar here? Mustafar was the lo- the planet where. I think Mustafa. What's Mustafar? Is that where that's where, S- stop. That, that's where uh, Vader burnt himself yeah. up. Yeah. Sith. Yeah. yeah. With used all to be the a, lava. Yeah, yeah, but it used to be a planet that was uh, flush if you played Vader Immortal. What's, Not, or, what, what? Like with green? Yeah, man. Mm, yeah. And then it lava. Yeah, man. It Lots went full Superman went planet. Well, yeah, yeah. Some, some shit went down. What's up with my face? Oh, it's really hot in here. Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can't wait till Cody and Brandy Rhodes. Well, Cody and Brandy Rhodes, hold that. that thought there. Cody and Brandy Rhodes, Cody, who is uh, responsible for AEW, him yeah. and Tony Khan, of course, and they have a big show debuting next week. They are coming in to studio, both him and his wife, Brandy Rhodes, and we'll be talking about all things AEW, plus the fact Cody Rhodes is a massive Star Wars fan. 
massive Star really? Wars fan. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk to him about some Star Do Wars. Do you think stuff. his wife is his wife? Mm-hmm. Sister? I, no, it's his wife. His wife. wife. Yeah, I wonder. I wonder because you know it goes one of two ways. It either goes like how your wife certain things that you love she just bails, or certain things that she loves that you watch. You should ask them the Mustafa question. I should see how that goes. <laughs> what planet? Where 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 did they meet Mustafa? Where was that? In what episode? Uh, or what book? Yeah. It yeah. was episode 10. Episode 12. This is a quiz. Oh. 12.5. Right. Yeah, What's Ewoks happening? Return. I don't know. No. Someone told me yesterday that I fell asleep during the Star Wars conversation because <laughs> I did. It's true. You well, legitimately <laughs> closed my eyes. That's and the most like, silent Makuga's ever been That's on the show. That's all we got to do is talk about Star Wars. Yeah. That's all we well, Star Wars or wrestling, and then you're, you yeah. got me. Yeah. <laughs> star wrestling. What if a Star, what if a star Wars wrestling? <gasps> Ooh, they dress up as Star Wars characters? Two Ewoks. Yeah, I'm good. Well, death. see, I would like to see two Ewoks fight to the death. Well, yeah, I would too. That's not what wrestling is. Oh, yeah, it's true. Well, yeah, That's gladiatorial. In Star Wars, it is. See them fight to the death. Isn't yeah, that? Yeah. Well, You're just made up a different no, sport. Are you sure? Well, yesterday Ryan sat and had a shirt that looked like, I was like, is that a white claw shirt? And he was like, no, it's actually like a wrestling. Like, Have you ever noticed <laughs> that satin's gotten quieter? I don't think that. He's been busier. Yeah, he's, he's, he's been busy. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, we don't we hear him. When, yell as much. when we're in here, we don't hear him. But that's also because they shoot in A now. Yes. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, Duh, you dumb Matt yeah. not knowing jerk. Yeah, that's Whoa. a good point. Face nummy. Uh, yeah, well, tell me what's going on with my face. <laughs> yeah, what, what, so what, wait, what have you heard? Is it like your eyes? It feel like your eye is watering? No. I okay. don't have that. I really think you pinched a nerve uh, with it this thing feel... where you go to the dark side, whatever that is, when you turn your thing. <laughs> dark side of the moon? Guys, it is so weird. And my eyes twitching. <laughs> what happens? Do you, what do you sleep? Think what side of the. Do you sleep on I your face? I woke up and it wasn't numb. Okay. Oh, no, I don't have that. Thing. Dr. McCook! Okay. I had a friend yeah. who had Diagnose that. Diagnose young Roxy Stryer. What's right. that called? Hi, Bell, yeah, Bell's, Bell's palsy. Bell's palsy. Fuck, yeah. that's my my friend got that in high school. She still has oh. Bell's palsy. She still can't move half her face. Oh. Wow. It's been a, a decade. So wow. this, is that what you thought it was? I thought it was Bell's palsy. Yeah. No, because I, 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 I would that. be able to not move. Okay, but and you can I, move it. Moving, you just can't right? feel it. It's a nerve. It's definitely a nerve. Yeah. yeah. It's either that or you're on your way to, you know, Mustafa. 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 No, Mustafa. 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 What's it called? Mustafa. You Mustafa got it? is the real one. I got one. it. Mustafa? That's yeah. The one. yeah. You what? did it. It's not my made up plan. What? 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 Yeah. Um, all right. Well, it is, uh, beside, wow. I'm hoping, I'm hoping <laughs> by 11.30 it gets cold in here. I'm just hoping by 11.30 it gets cold in here. Yeah. Uh, by 11:30? Yeah, I mean, that's when he comes in. I'm yeah, by 10:30. It gets well, I hope. I mean, for us, we got we can sacrifice, but having I, it's always embarrassing having guests in here when it feels like we're in a sauna. Let's something, blow uh, on them. something was not with your breath right now. Some you info really? was given to me out there that uh, nah, uh, one of okay. the air conditioning units starts smoking. So oh, we that's are good. Uh, sweet. So uh, let's hope that's wait, how. Wait, I'm goes. sorry. Oh, wait, what? I'm feeling it. Yeah, no, it's just not. Roxy blowing in your nose. <laughs> she doesn't know she's breathing that hard because her face is numb. Um, all right, I'm what else was it? Making fun of my, my breath and my face yep. and my nose. Half breath, and non your, knowing maps, stink bomb. And my hair on my shirt, let's my talk, belly let's, button. Let's talk about this thing tomorrow because we should talk about it what here. Thing? Tomorrow night. I know. Oh. Har- Harleen Harlites. Mm-hmm. We're going to Harleen Love Harlites. Her. The Halloween Horror Nights at Universal. We're going to be going there. Listen to this crew we got going. We have Roxy Stryer, yeah. Darina, the Queen of Death. Word. We have Katie Sackoff coming no, in hot. Uh, we got Frank. The Pumpkin Damn. King, uh, Mark the Yodiest of Riley's, Julio. myself, and hey, yeah. Josh McCougar. What? Yeah. Right. what a what? crew and we have. And Julie. We Julie's just found gonna, out. Yeah, yeah, well, I didn't know if, if he wanted to announce it or not. Didn't he no, say I that? did. I said on there. Oh, 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 and here's what I'll do. I'll, if oh. you see us at Halloween Horror Nights tomorrow night, I will have the Star Wars jacket. No. If you see me, oh. I will give it to you. Am I, I supposed to dress up? Oh. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. Why, oh. did, why did you, you all look at me like that was the dumbest you're, question? No, no, no. no, no. Wear, can you, no, can you elab- wear, wear wolf head? This way he wants to wear wolf head. I want you to, uh, yeah, elaborate on what you're going to wear because yeah. Julia's asking me. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know because either, like, either I'm going to wear black because, like, mm-hmm. you know, Dorina will be in black so we can sure. take pictures together that match. Dorina will be in black at a, at a carnival yeah. with kids at, at 12 o'clock on a Sunday. You true, nailed true. That. I'm not in all that. black right now, too. I got the uh, final. You really got there. I got there. Yeah. Film. You didn't know where you were going. But it no. made it. But, but the picture by the end of it, you went, all right. Oh, yeah, I was thinking, like, you could have gone more. Though, like a Circus. rave, or like no, rave is a rave. yeah, rave's colorful, yeah, yeah rave's colorful. Yeah, rave you know, is colorful. Like they wear yeah. all the, the tutus True. and shit. Yeah. I used to be a little raver. Finish really? story, half face. I don't know what I'm gonna wear, maybe cat ears because that's simple. I'm a cat, duh, duh, yeah, I'm yeah. a mouse. What are you gonna oh, wear mouse. besides duh. fear? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna wear, I was gonna wear a diaper, but uh. <laughs> 
That's probably just, pretty good. Yeah. Though. But uh, I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, I I mean, I'm not going to dress up because I don't really like Halloween unless the costume is a I'm pun. And my wife doesn't like the punny costume, so really haven't dressed up. I'm not required up. to dress up. You should wear no. the Rambo wig. No, you can't dress up. I'm wearing a Rambo shirt, I think. Mm. Yo, that shirt was dope. It's great. I love it. It awesome. Mine's an extra large, though. Give it to me. I'll wear I wore it as a dress. It, you already I, have one. I know, but I'll take two. I wore it at uh, at the damn screening. Uh, oh, yeah, you did. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was great. Yeah. Uh, I still want to I want to meet that guy that was said, like, compared to this, it was Citizen Kane. I was like, I'm going to push you in the toilet. <laughs> This is in the bathroom. Oh, uh, you push him into it. <laughs> Wait, compared to what? It was Citizen I don't know. Who knows? That's I just caught the, like, the end I of the conversation. I think it was the same guy that did that last episode. I hate it when people do that with like movies like, no Citizen Kane. Shut up. Right. I just hate that First comparison. First of all, Citizen Kane is fine. Well, it's, to be, yeah, listen, it is. Listen, listen, exactly. It's, fine. it's be, fine. And also, to be fair, we're also very passionate about that movie. Yes, so yeah. if it was a movie we didn't give a shit about, we wouldn't care what the guy said. But, but that's, also, that's just how, that's just Citizen how Kane is fine. Like It's just like, oh, it was a sled. Well, spoiler alert. Oh, my God. Oh, my Lord. Josh. What is the famous word from Citizen King? Rosebud. Oh. Roxy, I compete in the Schmodown. You do not. That is true. true. Do you want to know when I learned that? Yeah. Two years ago. No. What? I, I, went, I went to film school. Oh, that's right. right. It made us right, study right. that. But before Two that, uh, do you guys ever play Sims? Sim City? Sim City on the, the old Macintosh. Sure. Yeah. They were all the Sims. <sighs> Uh, not sin, Sims. Yeah, Sims. Sims. Okay, Sims. Yes. The that was the code to get more money, so that I could more money. lock uh, my people in a room together and uh, and make them fornicate. Oh, <laughs> wow! Another one, another quick story. Sure. We know what Roxy played video games for. Make them screw. Yeah, while, <laughs> while we're here, we might as well yeah. stay for a while, right? Um, in high school, my friend told me that the word matriculate meant to have sex. Okay. And so <laughs> I, I wrote. And so, <laughs> so when you matriculated into Down USC. Yeah. So I used to say all the time. And then I matriculated. Like, and then I matriculated. Him. Cool. Right. Do you want to know what the actual definition of matriculating is? I found out when you somebody did? was like, what? <laughs> They did what? <laughs> they did. Hello? I was like, they, you know, matriculated. <laughs> I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> you keep saying that word. Uh, yeah. So Anybody want a peanut? About me. Uh, Listen, uh, the right. funny the part peanut. of that is the word matriculate is very famous in the NFL because back in the day, there was the NF, like the NFL films and, and whatever, and, it, and there was a famous announcement like, and the Giants are matriculating the ball down the field, which means they were fucking the ball down the field. <laughs> yes, that is what that means. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, let's move on. Yeah. Down the field. Down I have something else I was going to talk about, but at this point, who you want to talk what about was this? It? I don't remember. What? I do. Because sure. we, we were talking about it all the way back on Sunday. What? The U.S. Navy confirming UFOs are real. Oh, yeah, yeah. Real. Let's talk about aliens. I love this. Yeah. I love it. Aliens and shit. Right, exactly. Cool. All right. So They finally confirmed that they're, I mean, that shit. yes, they yeah. exist, but they call them um, unidentified aerial phenomena. UAP. You yep. up. Milita- yeah, U.S. Navy confirms it. You up. Yeah. Bop, 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 so what does bop, that mean? Bop, bop, bop. Well, they, what does that mean? They, they admit that there are things that they cannot freaking identify. <laughs> right. And so I think it's, uh, I mean, but I think they're getting away from UFOs. I don't really know there's, why they call no, it, yeah. but I don't think they want to call it UFOs because everybody thinks aliens. Why but is why it is the Navy? Not- because they, they um, can see it. Yeah, naval, like the, you know, the, sh- the ships have the planes. Oh, because it's like what we saw the other day with the Navy, with that one thing that was moving so fast. Yeah, right. from the, right, 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 right. Because right. they're, going, they're launching from a carrier. But wait, but so here's, here's just the thing. The Air Force but this is on CNN, right? Like, how is this? Is, so the fact that even the fact, that you're not saying aliens, but that the military says, yep, UFOs are real. How is this not like the one of the biggest stories? How is this like, how is this a story that we forgot to talk about? How is this a story that not is not like running rampant? That, that, yeah. That, that, that they the the U.S. Navy says, "Yep, because, yeah, UFOs are real." Because there's so much shit going on, out and there. because right. nobody and because nobody believes it, people are still like, "Nope, gotta see it." Gotta Aliens it. gotta probe my ass. I first. There it is. Yes. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> it's a black dot. That's on the it. Screen. That's they it. call what it is? a tic tac that moves faster than anything they've ever seen. But they're calling it unidentified. Does that mean it is something that could be of this planet or no? Uh, yeah, it could be. But so then sure. it's not. But they don't. No, they, but it's unidentified. I, I said they can't catch the, those. The story. I'm not saying that they should say it's aliens. But they're saying the, even the fact that they say, "Yep." We don't know what the fuck it is. Then we should say, "What the fuck is it?" Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we try to capture Watch it? that? Can we? Yeah, they I don't try. Think they I think can. they try. The fastest thing. fucker. But also, what if that was just a fly really close to the lens? Yeah. Okay. Even even no Anderson way. Cooper. Yeah, Anderson Cooper was. Turn He's this up a little bit, it. please. They don't call them UFOs. They call them unidentified aerial phenomena. They these uh, the several videos they're talking about were recorded years ago by fighter pilots. 
Then in 2017, they were made public by the New York Times. More now from our Randy Kay. Randy. <laughs> yeah. It's rotating. Images of that rotating thing captured by U.S. Navy aircraft. Sensors locking in on the target. What is Commander it? Blowed up. Fravor saw it firsthand during a training mission, describing it like a 40-foot-long tic-tac, yeah. maneuvering rapidly D and changing like, direction. What is that? As we both yeah. looked out the right side of our airplane, we saw a disturbance in the water and a white object, oblong, pointing north. The object, the object was first sighted in 2004. How do we not have better cameras on these billion-dollar airplanes? 2015. Footage of the sightings, declassified by the military, weren't made public until December 2017. Right, that's fine. But that's like, but that's, that's what I'm saying. It's crazy. Even even if it's not aliens, like like what if, is it? If an, but if another country has technology Aquaman. like this, whatever, it's yeah. like, how do we not want to find out what the fuck it is? I, I don't know. I don't know the answer. <laughs> right? To that. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. That end. Well, that is uh, not a bigger story. I feel like in a hundred or ten years or four hundred years, whatever it takes for us to actually have really identified aliens. Huh? Well, I don't know when we're going to actually identify aliens, Got but it. whenever that actually is, I feel like they're going to play back footage like this, being like, "Told you." What? Not even told you. Like, what? What were these people? Right. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to call the Ukrainian president and ask him to investigate. Yes. That's Good call. Boom. That's Nailed it. Do. Topical. Okay. I Whoa. show. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We've never really talked about politics on the show. That's as close good, as it's right? good. And it yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. That was good. Pretty good. Appreciate pretty it. Pretty Appreciate good. it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was good. from Ukraine. Maybe. Let me. Let me. We sent we that thing. You What's find. the first thing you guys do? All right, let's, like, hypothetical. Mm -hmm. An alien ship lands on your farm. Like, you're like Duke Kent. What's his dad's name? Jer Jerry Jonathan Kent. Kent. Uh, Jonathan Marty Kent. McFly. Got it. What? Duke? I don't know. What, the, what do you want from me? Tom Welling? Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> The plane, yes. the plane, <laughs> the, <laughs> come on, yeah. Pearl Jam, let's go. The plane landed in your yard or your farm or whatever. What's the first thing you do? Do you contact somebody? Do you keep it to yourself? No, no, no. You tell somebody immediately, but you run and you run fast because I don't. I don't <laughs> you run? Do it. Yeah, because I, 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 don't, I don't think I'm I don't, a Christian. Listen, man, I'm, it's, yeah. it's straight up Independence Day style. And um, who's our boy? That uh, Will Smith. not Martin not Bill Gates, uh, the brilliant Mer guy Elon that died. The, no, Steve Jobs. Bank, not Steve Jobs. Carl <laughs> Sagan. Oh my God. The, <laughs> Can't, who Eddie Redmayne played him in a movie? Oh, yeah. Stephen Hawking. Oh, Thank you, Stephen Hawking. Stephen, Stephen Hawking said they were all dead. You, yeah. you just looked at us and said, "Come on!" And this is what you said: "Who's our boy?" <laughs> yeah, you were like the mom. We hung out with him last, Who's like our boy? the year before he passed. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, Mustafa. Yeah. Mustafa. He, uh, as we know, guys, who's our boy? Our boy. But why is Stephen Hawking's our boy? Because he was the one that said if the aliens come, we're fucking dead. Uh, totally. But why is he right. out? He will be if he was right about it. Yeah, because he said they're going to come here for, uh, uh, like, not, de well, death, yeah, but death, also take but over resources. resources. Thank you. Yeah. That's, See, I knew what he said. Couldn't remember his name. We don't but have enough said. resources for us. Exactly. It's true. Right. Well, maybe they can figure out other ways because they have flying well, tic-tacs that can do it. They definitely didn't come here to give us stuff. No. Think about it, though. Let's 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 go super sci-fi with this, right? Yeah, let's, let's do say it. that these fuckers, like, they're, like we are, like, pr primitive. Uh -huh. Our technology, everything compared to these fucking things. They can come from galaxies and from wherever they want and zip around in these things. And, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of these uh, primitive assholes are going to see us. Who gives a shit? Fly fast as, as fast as you can. Oh, sure. they caught us in their camera. What are the fuck are they going to do? They're going to talk about their stupid news program. Yeah. Uh, and that's it. What do you think? What is the, uh, it's not a think question. I guess they probably know. What is the closest they could actually be coming from? Because we've explored, like, that, that, the answer to that question far is far enough out. Could no, no, no. But that's, on, for, first of all, that's Planet. what we can discover. That's what we've been able to discover through this shitty technology we have. We don't know what they're capable of doing. They can right. come from, from who the fuck knows. But Maybe you they think that they could alternate time. dimensions, yeah, man. Uh, wrinkles right, right. in time. But that's what I'm asking. What is the closest they could be coming from? Could they be coming from Mars or no? Because we've explored enough In our known Mars. galaxy, so. No, I don't think it's in our galaxy. So, in ours, you, yeah. oh, so you think they couldn't be coming from our galaxy? No. no. We would, we, would have, we picked up on it. Exactly. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. So, okay. There you go. They're from further. Yeah. And I think, Einstein's string theory, and if you put it together, then yeah. you can bridge the distance. Maybe Did you, you see what it said in the it. bumper of that thing? What uh, it, uh, it said, these assholes think their world is flat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Some of these assholes. I'm now, still not convinced thing. it's round. I'm so scared of everything. It was a joke. It was a joke. I made for, a joke. For audio listeners, she was smiling. Except for, you know, Do we have jumping audio off listeners? things. Whatever. What? Huh? Yeah. Do we have audio listeners? Yeah. <laughs> we have a full podcast. Good. Good. Nailed that. Might have been on the air for 278 episodes. <laughs>
226. Oh, sorry. Didn't right. read that part. That's my bad. Yeah. Okay. So I'm Come on, singles. I'm Let's on go. Se- Why do you keep calling me Pearl <laughs> Jam? <laughs> see it wrapped around your uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Matt Dillon in the room. It's, it's making my leg warm. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, King Jeremy, where a road here, a world. Come on, and finish. Hey, home, bear me, even blue. Hey, home, bear me, and bear me. Let's do it. Okay, so. <laughs> From the wrong I listen to one on the way here, by the way. It's a good one. Different different type of music. Go ahead. Uh, okay, so the alien lands. Yes. Okay. Roxy, obviously, I call her. I'm like, hey, come pick me up. She gets lost, so I'm alone. Yeah. Okay. Complain. Then I call you. All I hear is, <laughs> and you're running. Gone. Riley's probably hanging out with him, like, hello. I'm not scared of. <laughs> Head gone. <laughs> no. At least I'm the only no. one who tried yeah. to come save you. I just couldn't yes. find no, you. Correct. Correct. Riley would right. be gone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't think that's ET coming no. down. Do you think they would see me because I would be screaming so bad? They would see me as like a weak thing and just let me live. No, you'd be dead in two seconds. Mm. Okay. I think they'd pick you off first. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we'll stop real- screaming. Realistically, I think Christian's the only one who makes it out alive. When the alien comes yeah. down of the people in this room. No, he's yeah. holy shit, yeah. bro. Yeah, just being honest. Well, you'd, scream, you'd scream too loud. Oh, yeah. yeah, you you get caught. I would be good until I did something dumb as shit. You make a right into the woods when they're all in the woods. Wood, yeah, right, 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 right. Fuck. Right. Uh, well, <laughs> with like, Roxy well. in a quiet place is quiet for like two years. And then she's like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like, I'm great until the moment where it's like, God yeah, damn. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to Krasinski it, find it yeah, away. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Those um, are aliens, too. And Riley, yeah, I, I don't know why you think otherwise. You're trying to make friends with the being for sure. No. Do you know? No. Because yeah, it's yeah. Maybe. They'll, they'll trick you. Yeah, they'll trick you. They'll trick you because they're going to. See, the thing I wasn't going to look like those. <laughs> Space guys, I yeah. got this. Hold on. Yeah, everybody's gonna look like that generic thing that they do with the spider. Like, the, it, no, they're gonna look like puppies, and then they're gonna kill everybody. Uh, and, and that's also, how it'll get me. Yeah. Maybe Cody makes it out too. Yeah, he's quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, so, no, because Cody's gonna wind up being one of them. Oh, oh. yeah, mm-hmm. Cody, you, you fucking alien. So I, um, yeah, so what I a twist! <laughs> <laughs> I, see, here's the thing: is like I like this conversation. You know, we're, the aliens are obviously going to kill us, whatever. And <laughs> that or an earthquake, we'll get to this we, first. We got it. Okay. So what I'm thinking is, and every time I watch The Walking Dead, all I think to myself is like, what do they do with the trash? Who do they have paper towels? Like I, when I'm like, yeah, that world must stink. Yes, totally. So I think to myself, I'd rather be the zombie. I don't want to be Rick fighting off a bunch of people with barbed wire bats and like learning how to survive right. and only riding horses. Like, and, it would be like living in Universal Horror Nights every day. All like, the you time. would not yeah. rather be the zombie. In Walking Dead, some zombies are dope zombies. I'd say, hey. Like if you're talking about eye zombie, you could be a zombie. You're, when you're a zombie zombie there, you can't speak, you can't fuck, you're you dead. can't eat. You're, I'm dead. It doesn't people. matter. I'm gone. So you'd rather be dead than be alive. Yes. In that world, Uh-oh. there's no paper towels. They don't have bars. There's no electricity. Josh, there's have no you TV. ever been in your room? They don't have cars. You, they, have you ever been in your room and you farted a bajillion times and you can't smell it anymore and somebody walks in and is like, it smells like farts in here? <laughs> yes. That's, 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 that's what, what you smell like all the time. <laughs> You're not smelling it anymore. Look what are you doing? Trying to, yeah, that's, I, I guarantee you. I need you. Einstein's string theory to get there. Hold on, get there, get there. <laughs> Ding. So you, I'm Mark. Uh, hello. So wait, you're Hi, saying, zombie. I'm Mark. <laughs> Let's be friends. You're saying that the nice. reason I'd want to stay alive is because I was worried about the stink? No, I'm worried about the comforts of home. Yeah, because the humans probably stink to bed, too, yeah. those that are alive. But you're Nobody's not smelling their teeth. it anymore, guys. Oh, I see what like, you're saying. You've been there for like, years now. You're used now. to it. It's you're just the way used, the world it smells. It just smells. like... Well, that's what I used to say about my but, dog. Like, my dog, he woke up my ex-girlfriend from a fart, and <laughs> She's like, oh my god, it smells terrible. I go, he doesn't know that he doesn't even know he farted. He thinks the air smells like that like from that, time to yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. for sure. Would you rather, would, yeah, go. No, but it, you, what I'm getting at here is like, so back in the day, if you go back like, in the day. if you go to Mount Vernon, like where uh, George Washington lived, right? Yeah. They talk about these things called tussy mussies, which is what you they would hold put, on. Wait, get Roke in here to ask him about his relationship with George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> wait, Roke, what? did you use a tussy mussy? So because he's old. No, I'm saying he knew George oh, Washington. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Roxy, I love you. <laughs> he really is. It is like Joey. It's like that episode. It's like, uh, get there. Uh, get there. I thought uh, it was a different thing yeah. we were making fun of him for. No, I was sorry. on board, though. Yeah. Either way. Okay. Yeah. No, he they doesn't have going. wooden teeth anymore. Mm-hmm. But there's these things called tussie mussies because these old people back in the day, they didn't shower all the time. Like, they never showered. They had those powdered wigs. They never washed their clothes. And so they all stunk. Oof. So they would walk around with these, like, potpourri old flowers in, like, a thing. And they would go, like, what oh, did yeah. you say, George? 
ah, yes, I can't smell my, right. my right. because I'm sniffing these flowers. So you're saying that as a people, we've evolved to not want to stink, and then all of a sudden we start stinking again, and we're like, ah, no I, big no, deal. I, I kind of get where you're coming from on this one. It's just like, because that's just the way the world smells. You, it, it's eventually your nose is going to, like all yeah. the time. Because think about it. Like, even perfect example is like when you're one or two years old, I can tell you from experience, uh, you don't pay attention <laughs> to smell. No. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you, you just don't. You walk around, oh, okay, and then eventually you go, well, what is that? That's horrendous. Yeah, like, but what point does a register like? You're going to be like, hey, dude, you stink, and for I don't want to be around for you. For a hot sec, for sure. Maybe even for a month, two right. months. But Maybe like, it never goes away. Who knows? We'll have to ask Rick Grimes. Um, yeah. Okay, listen. Let's uh, let's move on All to some other news cycles. Okay. So we got some, uh, some big news happened last night at Collider Screening. What happened, Billy? Jurassic World, they did a little screening with Colin Trevorrow. Oh, I forgot to RSVP. Yeah, and somebody asked a question, is any, maybe any of the original cast members returning? Sure, finish this story, Sam. Okay. (laughs) I'm trying to build it up, because it was a good moment. (laughs) It was. Laura Dern came out Ah, at the screening, screening. confirmed that not only is Laura Dern coming back, so is Sam Neill, so is is, uh, Jeff Goldblum, and they're all going to have substantial parts, not cameos. Not just like little shitty roles. Not shitty roles. They're going to have substantial parts in Jurassic World 3. No, No. this is a big story. Yeah. 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 Broke last night. At the Collider. Collider. Look at that. Do they have footage, video footage of it? They sure do. Can we bring that up? Uh, it's on. Um, it was just the last moment. We haven't cut the footage yet, I believe. Um, so it was just Twitter stuff. No, so it's yeah, on Frosty's. Uh, it's on Frosty. Let's see it. Frosty's yeah, Twitter. Yeah, yeah. That's, Damn. Awesome. I that's a big, that's a big Me scoop. Me too. I love her. Me too. I've seen fan. her a handful of times. She's. Yeah. Uh, she was at the, I think the BFCA's last year. She's yeah. very pretty. Woman. Did you take a creepy picture of her? Or? I don't do that anymore. Oh, you, you, yeah, but see, it was last see, year. See, here's the thing. You're not allowed to, t- to say things that I listen to your advice and you keep bringing it back. Yeah, well, you, this you was, learn. What yeah, I'm saying, go. this could have been a couple years ago yeah. when you were still no doing one, it. No one likes you. Uh, would you like to share anything else with this group? I'm so excited. I'm so excited to have you share this news and be here with all of you. Hi. Uh, I love dinosaurs. I love that you love them like we do. And if I'm not asking too much, if I'm going to get to join this party again, I just, I would hate to not bring my friend Sam Neill and That's That's really big news. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Is that okay with you? Yeah, let's do it. All so, right, let's do it, guys. You heard it here first. So you were the first to hear this, that Sam Neill and Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern are returning a major role. In the that's like massive news. <laughs> Good for Frosty, man. That's yeah, massive yeah. news. Yeah. That is massive news. I, I feel like that audience wasn't clapping as hard as I wanted. They should have been they clapping a more. lot louder. I yeah. am. I that, that, that's up a, and screaming. Well, maybe that's they like didn't com- know that's like that a Comic it was Con real. announcement. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. It really is. Yeah, it Good is. Good for Frosty. Frosty. Yeah. 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 The snowman. Is he here? No, I don't think so. But, uh, I think he's in. But all right, so let's talk about that. How better Frosty. Cody Hall. Yeah. How are you feeling about this? Yeah. I'm. I'm feeling good. I feel like this was already. Not confirmed, but we all kind of figured it was going to happen. Okay. So this is really cool. I think it makes sense story-wise. Uh, these people don't want to see dinosaurs anymore, so you got to bring the dinosaurs to them. You're right. You're <laughs> That's right. That's very true. Uh, I like this news. I think that it also a good way to, even if this is not the last one, if they say that it is, you know, this is a good wrap-up, and what a way do to do it. Do they all die? I think one of them does. The dinosaurs or the people? No, one of the people. No, the dinosaurs can't die. We've done this already. It's like it's just there's this you Jeff. That's the whole message of the movie. So you want to fuck with nature. You know, nature's going to find a way to come back. And now and it's now you, we're going to have to yeah, figure you, it out. Bomb them all. You don't think it's possible at the end of this movie is that the dinosaurs die? All no. of them? How do you how do you kill them? Cody. It, well, at the end of the book, they kind of blow up the island. Yeah, but, but they're off the island at this know, point. They're all I'm over the place. The, yeah. the source material has explored that possibility before of killing all the dinosaurs. I don't think they'll do it in the movies. Though. Yeah, if it was just, if they were just on the island, I would say yeah, they could probably just blow up the whole thing. I think they're the gonna thing. kill the dinosaurs. I think they're gonna try to kill the Wanna dinosaurs. Make a bet? No. Uh oh. Oh. No. Well, See, I don't I'm, think I'm I don't think they're gonna. I think, be, I think they're not gonna be not successful, but they're gonna kill most of them. They're gonna try. Gonna be, yeah. The yeah. last scene is gonna be one like dinosaur being like. It's gonna be Ian Malcolm. He's gonna say, "I told you." And this is what happens. This is chaos theory in the works, and now you all have to figure it out how to live with these things. Yeah. And they're gonna. Well, they show at the end of that short for um for the, the Jurassic World one that just they're the fucking things are everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're everywhere. Would now. you guys kill a dinosaur? Yes. I, I mean, if uh, not not the plant eating ones. <sighs> Would uh, you eat a dinosaur? Mm-hmm. Like if somebody was like, "Hey, try this Brontosaurus burger," like in for Flintstones. Sure. For sure. Mm, yeah. Hundred mm, percent. it just sounds delicious. Well, it depends. It was. I don't know. Is, we don't know. You don't know that because the same. Is, what if they that's become? Why you try it? What if they? Would you try dog? No. So that's, <laughs> that's right. 
Please no, don't, I, I, don't answer the question. <laughs> you try a human, for God's sakes. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> uh, if I was on an island and that was what there was to eat, that was it. You better believe. Well, if that was it, sure. Yeah. Right, I get it. Okay. But I'm t- I'm talking about like if they, the same way no, because not, we don't know because we don't. I'm know not if going we, to eat have dog as like a delicatessen like they do yeah. in some countries. And some mm. of these fuckers are pretty smart, like real yeah. smart. And that's that's usually how we that's determine what shit. what you can eat and what you can't. Right. Well, you can't eat dolphins. Right. Dolphins are smarter than us. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Well, interesting. What you would eat. It's not interesting because you no, would no, eat no, anything. No, no, no. Interesting that that's how we determine it. I never thought about it like that. Right? That's exactly what happens. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But I wonder, like, so how do we know that a dolphin is smarter than a lobster? Oh, Be- well. Well, I mean, scientists have studied their fucking heads. That's, that, that is the official statement that they mm. said. We've studied their, yeah, we've studied their fucking, fucking heads. heads. Yeah. I mean, lobsters are <laughs> tasty, but they're, yeah, they're dumb as shit. Real stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you eat a uh, they keep dolphin getting caught before in... you eat a dog? Yes. I don't like that question. I don't like that question. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's, you don't that's, have to like, like an the idiot. question. Yeah. Can't answer it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Roxy. Really threw me under the dolphin bus there. Yeah, that's true. I'd eat a dolphin Christ. before a dog too, Josh. Uh, thanks, Roxy. Yeah, I appreciate <laughs> your support. Thanks yes, for saving yes. me from the aliens, but not showing up in time. You're both monsters. <laughs> <laughs> monsters, I tell you. Did you ever see that documentary about the monsters. the people killing the dolphins? No, uh, wait, it was Hayden Panteri. Hayden Panteri. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, imagine what that would taste like. What dolphin? Oh, stop! I don't want to get into this conversation. Slimy. Roxy, stop it. <laughs> All right, let's, Skin let's, of it. Let's, let's like an oyster. We went, yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. We're, we're from Laura Dern being being back on the show. Yeah. You, so you did this. You did this. Oh. Yeah. You asked about it. Would you eat a dinosaur? You started. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, yes, you did. You want to play the tape back? You said <laughs> you eat a dinosaur. No, <laughs> 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 he keeps talking to the I did not say would you eat a dinosaur. <laughs> you a thousand percent did. I did? Yes. No, I said would you kill a dinosaur? And then you started with would you eat one? No, I didn't. You did. Cody, I'm almost. <laughs> you'll never hear me do this again. Play fucking Zoobly Zoo. <laughs> Change it up. <laughs> did I do that? Yes. Man, did Josh do it? Who asked if you would you. eat a dinosaur? I did that? I said it. Yeah, would it was you. you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I got me this time. <laughs> Can you play Where's Rodney? <laughs> Where's Rodney? Yeah. Taking shots here. Okay. Right, like, oh, we... hey, oh, hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Good impression, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I got to listen to I can't. I can't. I remember what he says, but it's just. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh. Great discussion on whether they should come back to the franchise. All right, <laughs> yeah. what's next? Boy, that was a long way to get a taco. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, James Wan has announced his new movie and the title, and it's called Malignant. He uh, started filming, so that's his next movie. It's a thriller. We don't know much more uh, other than I Annabelle like he Wallace. He has a new is movie coming out every week. He, yeah. he really does. What does Malignant have to do with other than tumors? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Uh, we don't know. I know. That's I just what... mean the word. Have you guys ever heard it in a sentence other than that? No. No. But you were, but that reminds me, by the way, you were bringing up that um, Hayden Christensen, Jessica Alba thing. Mm. The movie that you're thinking of is Awake, and that's Awake. not, but it's not the, but it's a different the premise one, yeah. for what you had. And she, she was also in another movie. Um, Blink? No, it, wasn't, it was something along something those lines, eyes. but he's not in that movie. The okay. Eye. Yeah. The Eye. The thank Eye. You, thank you. Thank huh. you. Uh, oh, and, the eyeball thing? Yeah. Yeah, so it was, he just got the two things uh, mixed up. Uh, all right, Malignant. Anything that James Wan does, I'm, I'm interested in because mm-hmm. I want to see what he, as far as producing, as far as directing, it doesn't mean I'm going to like everything, but he's just one of the most innovative creators out there right now. So anything that he puts his name to, I'm always interested to see what it is. So, so Malignant suggests a sickness or something vengeful that won't go away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it's a horror one, always. Well, kind of said it was like a thrill, like more thriller Thrillerish. than horror, but it's James Wan. I yeah. would, I would bet probably have that elements. Elements. Yeah. Have yeah. I seen a James Wan movie other than Aquaman? Conjuring. Conjuring. Oh, farts! He did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they did a Conjuring farts. maze, I probably wouldn't go tomorrow. I don't know what they. What do they have tomorrow night? Well, I, I know I got <laughs> spoiled that there's an US maze, which scares the shit. Oh, Fury is Seven. Great. Furious Seven. seven. Oh, oh yeah, Furious Seven. I love that movie. Yeah, uh, there's Us. Yes. Uh, Fast and there's Furious. like the Universal Monster First movies. Halloween Horror Nights. For a James Wan movie that he's seen. Oh 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 oh. No, there's a there's a Us maze tomorrow. That's a, that's at the Halloween Horror Nights. It's an yeah, Us maze. Yeah. What do they have? Do we know what they have? See. Okay, so they have a Stranger yeah, Things. Yeah, Stranger Things. Oh, that's Ghostbusters. Awesome. Ghostbusters. Jordan Peele's Us. Okay. Frankenstein. Wolfman. Ghostbusters. Yeah. Wolfman. Creep Show. Oh, oh, killer no, yeah. clowns from outer space. Yes. I am yes. in. Yes. Have you ever seen that movie? 
Macuga? Yeah, I've seen it. And then you haven't Christian. seen it. Oh, I haven't Macuga. seen it. Should I watch it? Yes, yeah, ridiculous. House, House of a Thousand Corpses. That one, Magooga is going to hate. Uh, the Curse of Panda. All of these. The, I mean, mm. every one of these. The Walking Dead attraction. Okay, 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 okay. And Holidays in Hell. Is that like a Christmas? Oh man! Kill? Oh, it's everyone. Like, like, you, if you took Macuga to one of these, he would lose his mind. One, are, two, are three, four, five, six, drink? seven, eight. Yes, nine, ten. There's ten. Ten attractions. We're gonna do them all. We're gonna do. No, we're not. Yeah, we are. Yes, we are. We are. Yeah. Why not? What do you think this is? I thought we were doing like two. They're gonna take us on a tour, man. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. No, Wait, no. you're really not coming from my side of the hill? Ours? I gotta, well, I gotta do this show and then I gotta do Jedi, right? But we're not going until six. Yeah, but I wanna go all the way. We gotta back get there. there. An hour and a half an hour. He's three hours in the car. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Do you wanna? Oh. Do you wanna carpool with Julie? Yeah, I'll okay. talk to her. Okay. She could, yeah. Cool story. We were figuring that out last night. Good. Figure that out after the break. Oh, too late. We already did. <laughs> too um, late. What else we got? Uh, looks like Quiet Place Part 2 is wrapped. Uh, filming, so uh, it's in the can. We're excited about that. Comes out next year. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> what? what else? All right, way to go, bro. Cool. Yeah, do you want, I don't know. Nah. Do you want to talk about it? No, yeah, exactly. Your right. Read the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, <laughs> I'm crack, trying to crack get, my back a lot. I'm trying to get to the news. Sorry. I go to a quiet place all the time. It's uh, I don't know. No, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not this time. Huh. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, Will else? Smith is going back to Netflix. Basics. Oh. No, and he's going to be playing a New York oh, City crime this. boss, Nikki Barnes. Oh. I saw the, the the picture that they posted next you to. You know who Nikki Barnes is? He's a badass motherfucker. No, no, no. He's, oh. he's Cuba Gooding Jr. in uh, American Gangster. Oh, is he? Yeah, okay, okay, Barnes. okay. Yeah. Nicky Bonds. Yeah. Uh, you don't he, think he's he, a badass motherfucker? No, he is. He is no, oh, I didn't say that. But that's, not, but that's not what he's saying. Uh, yeah. But if you put, yeah, you could see Will Smith putting that get up on. Look at that. Hell yeah. So oh, yeah. let's say Barnes, whose death was recently made known, was an American crime boss active in New York City during the 70s who led an international drug trafficking ring in partnership with the Italian American mafia, mafia until his arrest in 1978. He was sentenced to life imprisonment and he became a federal informant. Um, yeah, okay, that, there you go. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah Frank, he was uh, chief rival of Frank Lucas. Yeah. Who was the main And this character. is a Netflix movie? Yeah. 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 I'm down. Straight for night. Yeah. Show me up. Yeah. I like it when Will Smith does these kind of roles, me yeah. too. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to cool see TV him go a little so. dark. It would be. Yeah, I agree. But I think Besides is, the Bad Boys franchise, what is Ali your favorite Will Smith, like one of these kind of movies? I mean, I love I Am Legend. That's like No, I, I thought he was great. Legend's up there for I, me. I, I, I didn't like Ali, uh, the movie itself, but I liked him in it. Mm -hmm. Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, Pursuit yeah, of yeah, Happiness. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good let, one. You know what? That's a good, let's go back. Go, here's a question for everybody out there. What, your, what is your favorite Will Smith movie? Here we yeah. go. We'll start. Go from, go from the top. You know what movie I really liked him in that nobody has seen? It's uh, Where the Day Takes You. Which is actually, I've never well, seen there it. you go. It's his first movie. Uh, Made in America, Six Degrees of Separation. He was really good, and then you got Bad Boys. Independence yeah. Day is a is a good one. Enemy of the State is underrated. <coughs> uh, just, just skipped over Men in Black. Men in Black. I mean, the first one's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Legger, uh, Legend of Bagger Vance. Love Ali. that movie. I love Legend of Bagger it's Vance. Good. You know, it's a great. I I read the Legend of Bagger Vance book, and that book is great. It's yeah. better than the movie. Wow. Showtime. I don't know, Showtime. Uh, Men in Black 2, Bad Boys 2, Ride or Die, Jersey Girl. I don't remember him in Jersey Girl. I, Robot. Played himself as a cameo. As a cameo, okay. I, Robot, The Seat Filler, Saving Face, Hitch. Shark Tale. Hitch. Hitch. Shark Hitch. Tale. Hitch. Shark Major Tale. controversy in your match against Clark Wolf, Shark Tale. Oh, because it was Today. Shark's Tale, right? You said something. If it's today's game, you lose the game. Yeah. Yeah, back then, you got away with it. Um, but let's see, Seven Pounds was... Hancock was underrated. Yeah, it was. Oh, a lot of these I like Hancock. Was not I see. A lot of these are producer credits too. A oh, After Earth, not Oof. so good. No, great. Uh, Focus, not very oh good. Oh my God, he was in Winter's Tale. He sure was. That movie, not good. Uh, <laughs> not you know what? If you good. go through his his library, he doesn't have a lot of great movies, does he? Where is it? Yeah. It's I kind mean, of like some, more, more some like okay ones. Great movies. All right, dude. He's great. got Men in Black. It's a legendary yeah. movie. Independence Day is still my favorite Day. blockbuster all time. Okay, Bad Boys and Bad Boys you're Two. You're so far, he's playing in the '90s. What's he done I, outside the '90s? Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah. Hitch. Hitch is fantastic. Right. Uh, but that was like 2000 or 2001. You right? said outside of the '90s. So, but uh, okay, yeah. I, I, but, but when he but you said he hasn't been in great movies. Hancock was good. Where's Hancock? I said that. You did say that. Okay. Yeah, I missed it. You didn't like Hancock. What's that face? Because uh, they just spoke about it for like thirty seconds. Yeah, I didn't hear. It. <laughs> I was in. I was. I was like you, where you go when you black out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Homer Simpson thinking Basically, about going to clown. I legend. College. I Robot underrated. Yeah. I enjoyed both those. Movies. I like. I, I got to see I Robot. I don't remember. Where's this Bonnie? means war. He was in this means war. No, he was a producer uh, of it. I love that movie so much. Yeah. To your question, I think I'm going. I am Legend for my favorite, favorite Will Smith, Smith because of the. It's so 
there's a moment there with his dog. Yeah. Of course, I go yeah. to the dog part. Yeah, um, yeah, but I think that's it. It's, it's, and, it's, and pursuit of happiness is my other. That's, that's his best him. performance. Yeah. It's, he, he's the whole movie, and I am legend. Like it's just him. Yeah, I would say it's I would really say good. that that's his best performance, though. Pursuit, Which, of pursuit of happiness. I agree yeah. with that. He won the Oscar for it, didn't he? No, no. he has not. I didn't think he was nominated. He did. He got. Nominated. Was he nominated? Yeah. I, I believe he has not true. won an Oscar. I don't He's been nominated for Ali. Yes. I know that. I I I believe he he's has not been nominated won. for two. Um, which we'll see. In Pursuit of Happiness and Ollie. Yeah. That's what I would guess. Yes, yep. and that is correct. Yeah. Right. Uh, yep. True. See, see yeah. I am good at Schmodown. I knew that he was nominated for Pursuit of Happiness. If that was a question, True. I'd have gotten it. You would have gotten yeah. it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, that's it. As far as, as, far as mm. Schmodown goes, by the way, you still get those tickets. Florida, the October 19th show. Tickets still on ta- sale. October 19th, the SchmodownLive.com. Big title match. Corruption. Playing against the Founding Fathers. And in the undercard, you get the finale of the singles tournament. That goes down. And then this Saturday, 11.30 a.m., Janine the Machine versus Mike Kalinowski. You can get those live stream tickets now. This one on live. What do you think? That match? Mm-hmm. Janine's really studying hard. I know. Uh, Mike's coming off of surgery, mm-hmm. um, which he's made public. So, um, But he's also probably been studying after surgery. Maybe. there's not a lot to do. Maybe. Um you got to give the edge to Mike, but I'm not shocked if Janine pulls up the upset here at all. You? Okay. How do you feel? I think it, it, it's going to be Mike, but I, like, in every fiber of my being. And, yeah. yeah. I just, think everybody's rooting for Janine. And, yeah. not, not, and, and Mike's one of those popular characters we have right now. It's just she, that Janine She's is, earned it at this point, yeah. and he's had so many successes, and yeah. I just want this for her. I know your answer. You don't vote against Kalinowski. No, yeah. never. It's my boy. It's Who my do you got? I got Kalinowski. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be good. Good match. 11.30 a.m. PSA and the nuke will be announced right afterwards. Yeah. So you want to tune in to find out what the hell that is. It's going to shake up some this shit. This is the best headline I've best ever headline. seen on the internet. Okay. All right. What yeah. do we got? You ready? Yeah, do it. Steve Jobs called Disney CEO Bob Iger to tell him Iron Man 2 sucked. <laughs> <laughs> there is... There is some gold coming out of this book every day. I got a uh, – so, so, so this is what hey, I Christian, did. Christian, Josh McCougie here. Watch the uh, latest showdown. It sucked. It sucked. Thank, thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you're welcome. So here's, here's the thing. <laughs> I, more wild berries. I got – I told my wife yesterday. I'm like, you know what? My birthday is coming up. This book. Yeah. That's all I want. Yeah. Then I got an email from our friends over at Delray, and they're going to send me one. So um, I'm like, tell my wife, you know what? Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I know they, I they're gonna one. they're gonna send two. Can I? Uh, can I'm claiming it yeah, now. If I can, yeah, well, yeah. can I read it after you then? Yeah, absolutely. Because I was gonna buy it in the airport this weekend because I'm flying back and forth from San Fran and I like to read on. Planes. I'm gonna read it I'd immediately. Like one. Well, they only send it to him. So. I this, know, but yeah. he's getting his after. I can't get yours after. Oh no, 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 no. Hmm. Um, um, but the, yeah. the story goes. They so Steve Jobs is the biggest um, uh, shareholder for Disney at the time. Yeah, and so Bob Iger's like, oh, I think we're going to buy Marvel. And so Iron Man two comes out. <laughs> Steve Jobs calls up and goes, Nah, don't that buy sucked. It. I said, Don't said, buy no, it. No, no, no. He oh. didn't say don't buy it, but he said, I think it's like that movie sucked. So <laughs> you took, better, I took you better. Iron Man two. Well, he's not wrong. That movie's not not no, very good. It's not but, good. Yeah. Well, he said in two thousand nine, after our very successful acquisition of Pixar, we were interested in Mar- Marvel. So I met with Steve. And walked him through the business. He claimed to have never read a comic book in his life. He said, "I hate them more than I hate video games." What he do you told mean me. Claimed, like as if he's li- he claimed he I never shall read. not read comics. Yeah. So I bought an encyclopedia of Marvel characters with me to explain the universe to him and show him what we would be buying. He spent about ten seconds looking at it, then paused, then pushed it aside and said, "Is this one important to you? Do you really want it? Is it another Pixar?" So he just kept asking, like, and, and I guess so ultimately. Really get it. He oh, didn't well. get it, but well, Steve Jobs wasn't what? wasn't. I mean, he's definitely brilliant, but that one he missed the mark. Missed. Yeah. yeah, he missed Either. on that one. Yeah, um, but anyway, That's well, he didn't say no. He said it's important. I don't get fine. No, yeah, yeah and he's no. not he the final no. word. He just said he didn't get it. Well, yeah, yeah, he didn't get it, and that not everybody. You know, like I said, it was just one that he missed. Yeah, yeah. I said he had to go over a billion that he hit. It's kind of surprising that he didn't, in all of his acid tripping days, didn't pick up a comic. That's why he said uh, he claimed. Yeah. <laughs> right, because he maybe doesn't remember. He claimed, yeah. yeah. Maybe he doesn't remember. I didn't know he was big I, I can tell you that. Uh, what? I didn't know Steve Jobs was big in acid. Yeah. yeah. Wozniak, you know that dude. Yeah, oh, he totally. definitely read Yeah, he credits, uh, he credits a lot to acid, like the invention of the iPad. Oh. No, wow. wow. A lot of different things. Yeah, he, Steve Jobs talked about wow. his acid usage at LSD. Nice. That's By great. the way, um, Good for use. Uh, LSD. speaking of someone who's in Jobs, uh, Seth Rogen mm-hmm. does this thing. He was it was with Tiffany Amber Theason and um, who's the guy that used to do the 
give me, give me a hint. F- uh, food, the food show back in the Bobby day. Flay. Like, no, but it was one of the. He, he, he every man. Wolfgang. Oh. Every every man. They just, David Johnson. No, he'd yeah. go on the road and he just kind of. John Cena. I don't remember. He looks like Guy Fieri. Oh, Guy Fieri. No, I don't Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. Does, doesn't matter. Adam Richmond. Adam Richmond. Oh, Adam Richmond. Man versus yeah, Adam Richmond. Yeah. So yeah. Adam Richmond, and then some other guy who I don't know. And the four of them sat down. They were going over the uh, best burgers in L.A. And mm. it was just. What they get? I don't, I don't know where it came from. It was. It was. This. It was three. It was three different burgers. One was like a pop-up stand. Some guy who just started doing it like six months ago. There was a guy who did like a Filipino kind of uh, a different style to, from like a fancy restaurant that they only serve on Saturdays. And then there was. Mommy. No, they were just doing these three particular oh, burgers. Oh, oh, the, oh, show, the show in general, the premise is best burgers of L.A., but these were just three right. that they were voting on that particular day. And it's just, it was entertaining. I don't even know where it popped up. I think a fan sent it to me or something, though, too. And Love burgers so much. I know. I mean, it's, a, it's an, So where New York is pizza, L.A. is burgers. Yes, 100%. I love burgers. For sure. I didn't, I, re, I didn't realize that until like about four or five months after I moved here. A buddy came in from out of town. He's like, what do you want to do from there? I was like, well, we got a great burger spot on that corner. It's a really good burger spot. Burgers are great. Here. And I was like, well, you know what? This is a burger town. LA I feel like we're a taco place. Place. You don't feel that way. That, is, that as well. Yeah. But burgers. I mean, that's my wife is is all about. The I burgers, love right? the burgers, but what I will say is that it, L.A. has kind of botched some things with now everywhere with the. I get it. It's nice to have options, but like everywhere I go, half the menu is like burger, burgers. Im, no, Impossible Burger, oh. Oh, Beyond that's... Burger, no. um, Portobello Burger. I'm like, call it something else. Porta, no. It's, you, it's, well, it's right. a vegetarian no, no, sandwich. Up. It's not a fucking burger. Right. Yeah. Well, it's creative. Yeah, I get it, but yeah, like, I'm I want a burger, and when when there's six burgers on the menu and which four of them good? are not meat, and then the waiter lies to you, which one's good? Oh, they might all, all my They're all great. They're all great. Don't be an asshole. I went to I went to this place. I you know it's the place that Whitney. Um, and Adam yeah. had their wedding. With, oh uh, yeah, Butcher's I, I, daughter. I, I can see it, but I don't yeah, remember. Butcher's the names. daughter, I think they. It's all vegetarian, right? Um, and there's no meat on the menu, and they had a cauliflower steak, and the guy was like, "You'll be surprised. It tastes a lot like a steak." Nothing it like tasted it. nothing. Nothing like, like a steak. steak. I, I, hate hey, it. I was keep upset saying that to me. They it. keep saying it. People, Try this. Because people, people like convince themselves in their I mind. I legit felt them. insulted, and I, yeah. I was about to ask for my money, money back because it was like twenty dollars worth of fucking cauliflower. Excuse a lot of language. people say that. Fu- but it's like you don't eat meat. How do you know it tastes like you steak? You don't know. You have no idea what a thirty-two yeah. ounce bone-in ribeye yeah. from Mastro's tastes like, because I do, and it's oh, ridiculous. I gotta find out where I went. I was in Times Square, and I met a friend for for lunch, dinner, and we had and I had a steak. And I have to find out where the hell it was because it, it was so good. Oh my god! Would, you don't remember where it was? Uh, it was in Times Square, and it was this oh really, in Times and Square. It was a really nice hotel, but it was and I ran into Brendan Meyer's mother, which was amazing. No way! Yeah. How did you know? She came up to me. Oh. And, and she's like, I didn't want to bother you, but and I'm, I'm talking to her, and she's and and she's as nice as he is, and his brother, by the way, looks like the Incredible Hulk version of him. Totally, which is what I told totally him. and completely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because he came to the show yeah. the next night. Uh, but anyway, the steak, I got to find out where it was. It was, it was, sure it was in Times Square. Like it wasn't outside, like no, on 46. Was, or, okay. Uh, I, Dude, I was. I'm gonna be honest with you. We were there, and I had been drinking after okay. the comedy okay. show. So. I yeah. love steak. Yeah. yeah, one of the best steaks I had was recently in Houston because oh, of uh, yeah, well, it, fuck like, yeah, yeah. yeah it was just they put that the, thing. In the best oh. steak I ever had in my life. Again, can't tell you the name of the restaurant because they don't mm. do that. Yeah. Um, Atlanta. I can get the name really? of the restaurant because my friend John from college took me there. I was there for the Ant Man set yeah. visit. Right, and I was like, I told my friend John, I was like, because he lives in Atlanta. What was this for AMC or something? It was when it was for AMC, and they sent me to the Ant Man uh, set visit, and so I'm staying at this hotel, and John's like, hey, you know, I'll come get you, and I'll take you to this the steak joint. I'm like, nah, let's just go to the hotel. He's like, dude, no, I'm taking the steak joint, and thank God he did. To this day, this is 2014. I've never had a better steak, and I've had great steak. Have you ever had the bone in fillet at Boa over here? No, good stuff. Yeah. It's it, it good. It breaks Bo your wallet good. and it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. You've had that bone in. It's yeah. so good. I don't think I've had the bone in. I've done the filet. Oh, the bone in filet changed the whole perspective. Okay. I asked to take the bone home to put in spaghetti sauce. That good. It's that good. All right. Yeah. I'll have to it's so good. All right. And so Boa. Over Boa over here. The one in, on Sunday. Maybe when I win my uh when I win my bet against Kate, that's take what I'll that. Take that. Yeah. Totally. And then you, when you yeah. win, yeah. Yeah. What are you gonna say? Nothing. Right. Something douchey. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> All right. Well, we are gonna go to break. Woo! Uh when we get back, we're gonna take some phone calls because at we eleven are? Yeah, because at eleven thirty, we are gonna talk about the, the, the WB's statements on the Joker and about and I think we'll talk about Jim Vavita's interview that he had with both uh, Joaquin Phoenix and yeah. Todd Phillips. We'll talk about all of that and then we'll get to some phone calls afterwards. And then Cody and Brandy Rhodes come in at 1130. Alex, you ever had the uh, 
Six ounce sirloin steak at Chili's. I'm vegetarian, baby. Oh, that was a bad question to ask you. Hey guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break hey everyone, down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band Josh, of guests like Matt Nose, Josh. Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. Jack. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember something to subscribe up. to yeah. Collider like Sports YouTube up. channel yeah. for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations. And I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one Jesus, point. We talk Jesus. everything from movies, we talk about Jesus, life, and everything Jesus. in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. The, the journalist. Hi, I'm Coy John Rowe, host uh, of Collider right, so, uh, Heroes, and I'm here to, to tell you we've got 20 minute episodes the, coming the at you on Collider. Uh, video, all right, so uh, on YouTube, back to the future. It. Plus, now we've got hour long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, this every week we're going to try to get butt. some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows. You love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, and I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursdays on the Collider video channel, and it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Ooh, Harloff, shit. and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate. Everything about Star Wars including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. I'm not really known from a smart... What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling wow. fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In okay. particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet breakfast. Hey guys, Riley oh, here. And let me tell you breakfast. about rule of two. You looking for a star Wars fix. Well, rule of two is that show. It drops down collider videos, main YouTube channel, as well as on podcast one Jedi council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your you friends. Like it's hosted boy? by myself wouldn't and Mark like Fernandez. We talk boy? everything in the star wouldn't Wars universe like, with a lot like, of deep dives like and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there and rise. Jesus. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff. I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We nice. talk about everything Star nice. Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's, it's all of it. We take questions from nice. you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you want to just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. Make and then after big, episode nine, you got TV shows. So like we're going to be your sports center big, for Star Wars. Make it big, do it. make it Come big, on. and then we'll watch it. I like Hi, it. I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes what? and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is Same all over you, Collider you, right you now. You can listen to that horror-filled podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about 
witchiness, we talk about slashers, we talk about space horror, you name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out, get scared. Hopefully you survive the Witching Hour. Are we back now? Now we're back. Uh, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Collider Live. It is Wednesday. And, man, we have still a great, great show here. We're going to talk about all this Joker stuff, but we're really, really happy. 11.30 here. Both Cody and Brandy Rhodes are here, and they just walked in. We saw them. We're, we're excited to talk to them because you and I have talked about this, Rockstead. It's just a when you look at somebody, even when you said to Makuga yesterday, it's so impressive what he has done. Right? Ballsy as hell, yeah, impressive man. as all get out. It, it's wild. Yeah, it's when, wild. You, when you look at it, especially when the WWE is such a juggernaut, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going out and you're saying, look, I'm going to go. Because he had the opportunity to go back and work with the WWE and, and stay there, but he didn't. He didn't take the, the safe road, and he built it on his own. And, and now, look, they're going to be on TV next week, and they're going to go head-to-head. -head. Where is it going to be on TV? It's going to be on TNT. Oh, wow. They, and they're making they drama. massive waves. They're, yeah, they really are. They've the buzz that they caused because they did it the right way. And I want to talk to him about the process in general, about how he got everybody kind of hyped up, how to get the wrestlers hyped up, and and the fact that um, you know his, his wife's involved in it too. And I and know who the investors were Tony Khan. Uh, and he's a and and Tony Khan happens happens to be a massive wrestling fan. Yeah, which Makes is sense. why which is why of all the people who have tried this one kind of stuck because yeah. of the investors. Can yeah. you ask him just blatantly sure. just one easy question? Does he think the XFL will fail again? I will. Please. I will, for sure. I it's am good, curious yeah. about that, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it's a good, it's a good uh, question. And he can answer, honestly, because... Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't yeah. He's got no skin yeah. in the game there. Well, and it's also, they've, they've gone, they've made some moves to... to Try to start a little bit of a you know a riff with the WWE, but I want to get his thoughts on on NXT being on television now and all these things. And Star Wars, he's a huge Star Wars fan, so we'll yeah. talk about all those things at 11:30. So stay tuned for Cody and Brandy Rhodes. Don't go anywhere. I thought I lost my uh, Heroes Villain shirt, <laughs> but I think I put it on my desk. Okay, good. I, like, did you, I mean, did you not just see Josh just panic? I was, oh. No, I missed <laughs> it. I saw that. Yeah. Like, where else would it, have, where would it have gone? I don't know. But also oh. to cause that kind of panic. I like, but I l really like that you shirt. You left the building. I know. I'm wearing <laughs> I'm, I'm wearing it on Rumor Mill today, and I was worried about it, and I'm going to bring that jacket to uh, Halloween Horror Nights oh. so people can get it. If, what, if somebody wait, are you going to eat a lot at Halloween Horror Nights? Yeah. I'd probably rather drink a lot. I was gonna say because because you probably throw up. Yeah. Right. I don't. I, I'm I'm bad. But you eat a lot. That's why I'm saying I, I do, do eat too. a lot. Yeah. Like in general, as a person, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And like when you, especially when you go to amusement type of places or those types of the theme parks. Yeah. You, well, like you slam fingers? down hot dogs oh. and all that kind I of crush it. Crush it. I so want to. Was... I want to get lit and eat. Oh. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, there you go. There, there it is. It's your next sound bite, there, Cody. I want to get, I wanna lit. get lit and I eat. I do. It was the pause that sold it. I want to get lit. And, and eat. Yeah. Okay. Like, let's have a fucking blast. I yes. just, I hadn't thought about how right. excited I'm going. That's yeah. your next shirt, by the way. I want to get lit and eat. <laughs> well, I do. It's actually Perfect. Lit. easy. I want yeah. to get lit. Are we, you guys, we are going to do that. Let's have a great time. Yes. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, like, uh, Josh, being scared only has to be part of it for you. It'll be fun. I want to suck You're your blood. Is there like fun. people that run around the park and like try and scare you during yeah. the whole Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you, we'll take I, shots. Did you hear about this? Some people are actually going <gasps> to Universal, dressing, going into the bathroom, dressing up scary, and coming out and trying to scare kids. No. Did you hear about this? And then no. kick these motherfuckers out. Yeah, yeah. Universal. You can't like that. work here, like dummy. You're yeah. not allowed yeah. to wear yeah. uh, any Disney outfits at Disney. Did no. you guys know? No, no, no. That, Correct. Yeah, 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 you cannot no, no. do that. No, because you can, because you you can, can trick, trick kids people. and stuff. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, so that's crazy. That, I understand. That makes 100% you know, uh, sense. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Do you know the other rule that the Disney princesses aren't allowed to sing? No, really, no. What? No, no. So they're not allowed to sing. It's like a little girl comes like up. Like in like, life or at the park? At the park. So it's like, hey, Elsa, um, I wanted you to sing Frozen. I don't know who's that singing. Go, yeah. that, right? And she's like, I'm sorry. My voice is hurt because I was singing with Olaf all afternoon. Because some of the princesses are great singers and some are, are not. not. Right. And they can't well, be they, like. They hire them purely off of. Look. Right. You'll see them sing at the parades size. and stuff. Yes. It's so much yeah. about yeah. size. Oh, yeah. I remember I was auditioning for um, Tinkerbell. Years ago, I was in college. I, did see it. I can see it. I was auditioning for Tinkerbell at Disneyland, and I was too tall. Wow. And immediately, you're too tall. Wow! Like, because if you're they knew who they're five three, and oh. they knew who their princesses were, and you have to be under five one. Oh! And they were like too tall. You can go out right. for, but I'm too short to be a princess because they're five seven. 
Mm-hmm. So it was literally so you were like, fucked. what is your, what is your sat? Well, no, I could have been a. Uh, so they put you in a Mickey costume. Put the, put oh. the, <laughs> well, I mean, you I wanted it in summer. Too, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to rat out this person, but my, I have a close friend that was Cruella Deville. Oh. At uh, you know California Adventure and Did Disney, she, yeah. was, and it, was it fitting out? for her personality? Yes, oh. it was awesome. Okay. Um, the crazy part, she could have also played like Cinderella, like she could have played both. But she was she loves being evil, and she's very very funny, and she's very very quick. And she told me some crazy horror stories from the park because like if kids came up to her, she was allowed to be mean to them because it was Cruella Deville, right? They were like, nice. "Well, you do this," and she's like, "No, get away from me," which is awesome. Like, like that's the fun one, asshole, right? right? But then these creepy dads would say uh-huh. stuff around her, right? And she got in trouble because one dad said to her, "She's like, how about you?" take some of this dog meat and she goes I would if I could find it and the dad complained at Disney oh, Parks oh come on that's a Cruella and line. she went in the office and the, and the guy was like I just have to bring you in here for shits and giggles yeah cause we're not gonna way to go oh, oh good. Good. good but good, she good. said that like the dad's getting creepy around the princesses is like a real problem I'm sure it I'm yeah. sure yeah. especially yeah. when there's when they sell beer uh huh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. E- easy guys right yeah. Yeah. Jesus right. Christ well yeah. I get pretty lit and eat a lot of food when I go to Disney cause if you're going to California Adventure those drinks are so sugary. I'm drunk uh, off sugar alone. Right. It's like all it's of a like sudden, yeah, you're skittering. just like now yeah. my whole face is numb. Yeah. It got, when I stood up, the other part started oh, to. Good I don't for know. You. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's let's get into Bronxy. some of this stuff here. We uh, want to talk about. Uh, th- there's a lot going on with Joker. Tons going on with Joker, and we'll start the with the, that uh, Jim David, our buddy. Over at IGN, really, I believe, got one of the only sound bites of Joaquin Phoenix and Todd Phillips talking about the controversy and, and and whether or not they thought it was a controversy. And I saw a little bit of what Joaquin Phoenix was saying, and he was like, "It's really not on the filmmakers to make the audience behave morally." That's right. Not, it's true. And and he said it's the same way that. What he, controversy are you talking about, Chris? That the fact that um that the movie has been called dangerous and will it will cause people to act dangerous and will cause people to act violent and Joaquin Phoenix that's not in in a, in a very elegant way that's not on us right and then he said kind of throwing it back to Jim and he's like it's like me telling you not to ask that question because that question that you just asked is going to cause someone to think it. So he's like, I can't ask you to do that because I'm limiting your speech. And I'm limiting you from not asking that question. You have to ask that question because that's your job. And I thought it was a great point. Well, I mm. think uh, I, when we were talking about it last week and I, a bunch of people reached out to me on Instagram to like hate on me about it. And they're like, you should let people make their movies. Oh, I 100 percent agree. The point I was trying to make is that not everybody is like us in this room. And some people may watch this and think to themselves, right. I could do that. But that's not on the film. That's not on the filmmaker. Right. Right. The the actors, the it's on a nobody. Same you, way about this as you do about violent video games. Uh, probably, it's, it, but it feels like it's in the yes. same kind of thing. It's yeah. like it, I don't believe violent video games cause this, and I don't believe movies like this cause this. It's up to the it's the person that does it's it. The mental state, also, and it's the mental state. And uh, the other part of this, uh, there was another interview that Phoenix walked out. Did you oh, hear about no, that? No, no, he I got, actually heard about. It. I don't know. What yeah, Robbie said. Collin has gone viral after the actor walked out. Same question. Joker might firstly end up inspiring exactly the kind of people it's about. Was he tired of the question? Phoenix replied, why? Why would you? Why would you? No, no. And then walked out. So he maybe, maybe it's like tired of, tired or, of the question. Tone. And also like as a person in, who interviews people and everybody in this room, you have to figure out when you're going to ask the question. Yes, it might be his job to ask that question. Right. Maybe the producer is telling him you have to get this answer. But that doesn't mean you have to lead with it. Right. Maybe Jim, it did, maybe Jim did it in a better it. way. It doesn't mean mm-hmm. you have to ask it rudely or right. you could say like it's a good point. at any point in it, you could say, you know, it's come up a lot in the news, and I feel like the fans are wondering about this. Can we find this. that clip when we walk down to see how the how the interviewer posted? So I don't know. I didn't I like listen to that. Yeah. You're right. To your point about violent video it. games and violent movies, is like anybody can find any inspiration from any violent movie. Well, uh, this is what I was thinking, and maybe this is I, – I tend to take things to extremes, so forgive me if this – I hope it doesn't offend anybody. But, like, you know, what's worse than uh, watching Nazis on screen? Probably nothing, right? Mm-hmm. Nazis are as bad as it gets. So do the people who think we shouldn't show – Joker stuff think that we also shouldn't show real life events that have taken place. That's a solid point. Because now, if right, because people get inspired by that. Yeah, yeah I, I just yeah. don't know. And and there is a, a well, resurgence I, of Nazis now. And is that is that what people are drawing the correlation to? But I think that's what, what Joaquin's point was also is that pe- wacky people can be inspired by anything. Anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like the, I can't ask you to not ask your question the same way you can't ask us not to make oh, the movie. And right. there's like what's and, wrong? Nothing. I clicked on a, the wrong video. Nothing. Um, it's fine. I, w- the Porn. other thing, too, yeah. is like... No, it's not that either. The other thing, too, is, um, like you said, anything can inspire. I just... And 
I just hope that us talking about it in the press like this doesn't add more fuel to the fire and then actually inspire somebody. Right. Is there not video on it, guys? Is that what it is? Is it just? Is it, was I think it, I found it. Hold on, give me. Okay. A yeah, here. I had a problem finding it. I, do, I think it's just such a slippery slope, and I know that people on the show all the time go back to me talking about what comics can and cannot talk about, which I, I feel like I was misquoted on. But mm. I, I just think that as an artist, you, this is a character that exists. You want to tell your story about it. You tell your story about it. People who are going to do horrible things in the world are going to find reasons to do horrible things, regardless yeah. of if the movie The Joker exists or not, yep. regardless if uh, any video game with guns exists or not. Regar- all, all, all we can try to do is slow these people right. down, and I don't think that eliminating this kind of work would gonna, slow them down. Well, is, is that, was that not it, the first one? No. Somebody okay. just, some people just I'm, don't, I'm don't worry about I'm it. Looking it's fine. For it. Um, well, let's talk about Warner Brothers' statement. Yeah, what was Warner because Brothers? this, this started statement building. Yeah, right. yeah, this yeah, started yeah. building. So finally, uh, Warner Brothers did release this statement, and it says, Gun violence in our society is a critical issue, and we extend our deepest sympathy to all victims and families impacted by these tragedies. Our company has a long history of donating to victims of violence, including Aurora. And in recent weeks, our parent company joined other business leaders to call on policymakers to enact bipartisan legislation to address this epidemic. At the, at the, same, at time. the same time, Warner Brothers believes that one of the functions of storytelling is to provoke difficult conversations around complex issues. Make no mistake, neither the fictional character of Joker nor the film is an endorsement of real-world violence of any kind. It is not the intention of the film, the filmmakers, or the studio to hold the character up as a hero. Okay, so this is, this is the, the one side of it is the conversation that we're having now and how important it is and whether or not you know it's it's valid or I mean I think it's valid for people to ask the question but I also think that the responses have been valid also the other side of this is the business side of it mm-hmm. people are talking about this movie people are talking about this does it, it is is this a thing that because people are talking about it rocks that more people are going to see this yes. is that 80 going to turn into 100 that projected 80 is it going to are more people going to see it now because of it and Will you know? Will, will security amp up more around these around this movie? That's I think also the answer is valid question. I think the answer is yes. Uh, I'm definitely. You guys know I already have my like extreme fears of going to the movie yes. and where I sit and whatnot. I was thinking about that with this one, totally. just like and especially because I've been talking to um, them about the premiere and whatnot, which seems like the, even though the security's high, the scariest Are you going place on to Saturday? go. I don't know. Okay, I'm uh, thinking about it. Um, oh, well, I would have to receive the invite first, so okay. I've been talking to them. Okay. We'll see. Um, okay. Are you going on Saturday? Uh, don't know yet. Okay. So anyway, um, scary. I'm afraid. Yeah. Of like all different things in life, I'm afraid, but of I don't know why I just gotta keep having these visions. You are five and, two. Uh, five three. Five remember. three. Yeah, extra inch. Be, right. Uh, That's can't why you couldn't be. Right. Uh, I have a friend that is not gonna go for many weekends because he too nervous. Huh? Is nervous yeah. about, and uh, I find that really shitty yeah. that, that that we're Just in the this world, world. We're in that world yeah. yeah we're in that world i mean when yeah. we went to i understand your, your friend's concerns i do, I do. too i mean amanda's I too. like you when we were in hopton shaw she couldn't take her eyes off this one lone kid in the in the audience and i was like yeah. i mean it's a legit fear that we have now yeah. unfortunately well it's also the thing i hate to bring up is because there were stuff and because he was it was during the dark night yeah and it was and it was you know he thought he was the joker you know so it's like uh you know uh, it's it's that's why I can understand what yeah, fears but would the, go up. Yeah, the thing is, in you could skip going to see the and to your friend. I totally understand and I feel that. But what I try to tell myself is, I could skip going to see the Joker, and instead I could go to the grocery store. And the same thing. And the same exact. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. So it's like you know, unless you're gonna literally stay inside your house and be somebody who does not leave. Right. It, you, it's just as likely that you're gonna get hit by a car on your way to the no, movie no, theater. No, no, no. It's just it's that's the whole point of more domestic likely, terrorism. A lot more likely. I mean, that's it's to cause That's terror, it and it's and it, and it has like even even the, those people, even a lot of those people who have that took the carriage way out and took themselves out, right? They have completed their mission in terrorizing people, even mm-hmm. that that weren't necessarily directly affected by it. Because like you, ten years ago, you weren't scared to go to the movies. movies now, right. I'm even and now you it. are. Yeah, and so they, you know, that's that's a that's Is that an long unfortunate. Was ten years ago. It's also why I stopped going yeah, to um, big uh, festivals like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just it's it's a you know it's it's a shitty time that we live in, but also I don't think that that means that uh, Todd Phillips, Joaquin Phoenix, and the people who make those movies should be criticized for it. I think no. that they should make the movie that they want to make and make them because there were lots of movies that were like this or or. 
you look at uh, a taxi driver or mean streets and movies like that that this shit didn't happen back then um, and the movies were and there are a lot of Scorsese movies that are very d- fucking disturbing yeah. and you know and the, a lot of these like chat spaces like 8chan or 4chan or whatever are fueling fires for yeah. Yeah. you know things like Charlottesville and all that kind of stuff and creating a safe haven for people that shouldn't have that safe haven yeah. all right. so it's a, it's a tough it's a tough parent thing. your kids yeah. Yeah. parent um, your children seriously it's, Get them it, off those it, fucking websites. Listen, listen. It's a lot of that is is valid. A lot of that is valid. Not all of it is too when it comes to mental health. I, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But I think it's where it has, it a, lot to, it has a lot to do with people it. that are trying to point fingers at this movie. Yeah. Really, we need to be looking at ourselves and how we're teaching mm-hmm. our kids. I don't disagree with that, but I also think that there's sometimes sometimes it's uh, it's different. It's it's different when it comes to just chemicals in the brain. And with, now, with, now, whether that's past history, and that's whether the things that happened is just. So, with as a, as a parent, yeah. if you feel like that you're seeing things in your kids that could be, I don't know what you want to call it. Right. I and mean, this is a t- help and reports and all that. You, uh, yeah. you want you want to be you, more involved. You, yeah. You need to be more involved. That's a that, you that's get a, involved with that. 100%. Right. Yeah. You don't ignore so I think that's what Roxy was saying. That's yeah. what I would say. Is my, that you know keep you want to know. You want to be asking questions right. to your kids. Yeah. My my. Uh, cousin is at risk to my aunt and uncle adopted a child who um, was sh- uh, showing signs of violence and they he has been in the institution for the last three years as mm-hmm. a as a child yeah. and it pains them and it kills them and sometimes they go to visit and sometimes he won't see them but he uh, smashed open a um, uh, picture frame and and tried to hurt, hurt himself no oh, one of the siblings oh wow uh, and you can't just ignore that uh-huh. and a lot of these stories what we have seen is that they have displayed something previously that somebody did see something previously and didn't do anything Maybe about right. it right. Um, yeah. and then it is and then it is on well that's 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 100 percent right and that you, you, you gotta you gotta act on it for sure i'm just saying that you just never know like you're you're they they reacted to it the right way yeah so you have to even have though to. it's your child and even though yeah. which i don't understand obviously the way that you right. do but you have to yeah. tough conversation to have and unfortunately we have to have it because of uh, you know what's going on what in the world are. and what's mm-hmm. happening and and unfortunately the time Todd Phillips and Joaquin Phoenix do have to keep answering this question, and they have also the unfortunate thing is they have to cross their fingers and nothing happens during the run of this movie. And I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to give the benefit of doubt to humanity on this one, and I think we're gonna be okay. Um, but uh, look, we're probably gonna um, try to po- sway a little positive here and go yeah. a little. little I, mean, I think it was a positive conversation, but, yeah. I, but you know what I mean. Get a little more lighter, sure. Uh, because before we welcome our guests in at eleven thirty, both Cody and Brandy, Josh McCoon will not be here. Jay Washington's going to step in, and we're going to have some fun conversations here about AEW. Um, I don't know, Cody. Can we get can we get uh, some phone calls in by within the last ten minutes? Sure. You think? All right, let's try to get the phone lines in. Anything you guys want to talk about? Any questions that you might have for um, for Cody and Brandy that you want us to ask? I have Go a question ahead. for you. What do you got? Uh, four water bottles. They're little though. Think about it. So if this was yeah, a... but why'd you drink part of one, part of two? Like what happened? Good question. Yeah, just, it is just something stack. that we uh, need one, to discuss. One just gone. fell in yeah, landfills. Just, so, okay. What happened? Okay, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> fell in landfills. Hey, you're on Clyde Live. Who do we got? This is AJ from Lafayette, Louisiana. Hey, AJ. Hi, AJ. What do you got? What do you got for us today? What up? So we're gonna. Uh, I was just listening to the. Uh, the somber uh, conversation. So let's lighten it up. Sure. RJ. Yeah. What are you thinking of, Big Brother? It's the season finale tonight. I'm not too happy. Great question. Great question. Look at her light up. Look at her light up. My yeah. God. Are you are you not too happy because you love Cliff and Nicole? Uh, absolutely. And uh, I've seen the spoilers, and I just I know exactly what's going to happen, and I'm just. I can't stand it. So what I just heard was, mm-hmm. blah, 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 blah. but why would you read the spoilers? Why would you do that to yourself? AJ is my homie, and that's why I know it because it's Twitter feeds. It's uh, a live show, it. so it's a oh, live so house. Broke. But yeah, mm-hmm. but the thing is, and so I'm, remember how I was telling you guys at the beginning of the show that one of the guys is like possibly racist, not oh, clear. Yeah, yeah. So he's 
gonna be he probably is gonna win the whole show really? so it's kind of like okay. an unclear Whoops. if you will there were two guys and this one has just somehow picked off every everybody end. I don't know how I, this is too long of a conversation because I still have I, the show's been on the, the air for a thousand years. years and I still don't know how you win this show I, mean, yeah, I have no I, idea yeah. you win this show it's too, uh, long, it's too long of a conversation but votes of your uh, of I'm sure the people like in the Survivor house. Yeah. Thing? yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, votes well thank you thank mostly. you for the call uh, AJ well, thank you AJ thank we'll you we'll take we'll take another call if you've been to Lafayette Louisiana gorgeous yeah Lafayette, Louisiana, Louisiana is amazing. I, I, wow, what did you go for? Uh, like college tours and stuff yeah, cool. through Louisiana. Wedding. Yeah. No, Who was uh, it actually a oh. wedding near there. Near yeah, there. Get knowing you. Hey, you're on Claire Live. What do we got? Hey, it's Josh from Florida. Josh, what's hey, going Josh. on? What, what up, Josh? Josh. What, part of, what part of Florida? I'm Lake Worth, Florida. So are we going to see you on October 19th? Lie to yeah. me. Okay, good, because yeah. I was going to hang up. Can I come? All right. Yeah. Uh, what, do you, uh, what do you got for us today? <laughs> so... One one thing one of my favorite shows on TV is Cobra Kai. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, it's just such, such a great show. Yep. So all my friends refuse to watch Cobra Kai. I'm uh, obsessed Silly. with this show, and most of my friends refuse to watch the show. So I want you guys to convince my friends why they should watch Cobra Kai, and I'm going to show them all this clip. All right. So, well, all right. So wanna... the first question for your friends would be: Are they Karate Kid fans? No, none of them have watched. Karate. All right. So well, that's a, that's have, an uphill battle. Yeah, so little, I think you have to show it to them first. I had this conversation yesterday with with Ellis and uh, and Mulligan, right? Now, the first thing that they need to do is watch the 1984 Karate Kid, Original. which is a classic yeah. movie. And same, still holds up and is still fantastic. Yeah, same yes. director as the first Rocky. Yeah. Um, it is the same musical composer from uh, Rocky. It's uh, it's just a great coming of age story. It's got a lot of good themes. Still holds up for sure. And you know the flip that Best Around was supposed to be in Rocky and By the Tiger was supposed to be in Karate Kid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know that. Yes. Yeah. So the thing that you you tell your friends you get, they've got to watch the first one because the thing is there's a lot of stuff in the first season that ties in to the original movie um, and if you are a massive fan like myself Makuga and Riley I don't know how much of a fan you were of the original Karate Kid Roxy big, massive, big so she, uh, massive fans here yeah, so you are too so you pick up on all those things so that's I think they, they see it and they probably think oh this is like the next Karate Kid or some the love that went into the making of that movie from John Hayden and Josh, the the creators of the show. It, it's like no other. Whenever you when we talk about Kevin Feige on this show all the time with his passion on the Marvel movies and why it worked, it's the same thing with these guys. This is their Star Wars. Here's, this is their Marvel. Here's the elevator pitch, Josh, for your friends. There isn't a TV show on television, streaming, whatever that perfectly encapsulates the movie quite like this does because there's been a lot of TV series that have tried to replicate the movie or try to be part of the movie universe and have failed miserably. This one knocks it out of the park. Yes, and the other thing that it does very well that it takes, uh, it speaks to our, myself, Riley, and Makuga's generation. It also speaks to the younger generation because what they did, they did very... That's me, I'm young. Yes, they did the smart, they did the smart version of the cast, they cast the original characters, but then they had a whole new generation. So there's both sides of it. So we're gonna be like, oh, this is a bunch of old people, or this is a bunch of young people. It it is a perfect balance. Yep. Also, um, I don't know who your friends are, but I think great for men and women. Yes, like you're talking about agreed. both My ages. Wife loves yeah, this show. I think it's great for both. And if it's a financial thing, truthfully, you could just sign up for a month. Yeah. There's also a week for free, so you could sign up and binge everything yep. in and one I, week. And I think they actually got well, yeah, rid of thing. that, right? They, you can watch this thing with ads. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, oh, just wow. uh, just on regular YouTube. Just so it's definitely that. not yeah. finances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I, also, Josh, too, if if your friends don't want to watch it, get new friends and come out and yeah, hang out with us. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Josh. Thank you for the phone call. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks. everybody Yosh, who called Yosh. in. Thank you so much. Okay, look, we're going to say goodbye to Yosh, Yosh, Yosh. And we are going to... Check out Rumor Mill today, 2 p.m. live on Clatter Video. Twitter, Roxy's going to be on the show this week. Yeah, awesome. yeah, buddy. And Jay Washington will be joining us because in studio, ladies and gentlemen, from AEW, debuting next week on TNT, Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes coming in hot at 1130. Stay tuned. Play the wrong video again, guys. I'm sorry. God. Hey, guys, it's Perry here to let you know that Movie Talk is moving. We've had a great time in this 3 p.m. Pacific slot, but guess what? We want you to start your day with Collider Movie Talk, so we're moving. 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern. It's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a longer show with some brand new segments, so tune in starting Monday, September 16th, 9 a.m. Pacific. See you there. 
Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Sports Time. Well, you know, if you've been watching us every week, you know we break down the latest and the greatest in the world of sports, talk about the big issues, the big games, all of it with a rotating band of guests like Matt Nose and Josh McCuga. We've had Taylor Bashotti on. We've had so many great guests. Now, if you want to see more of Sports Time or you want to try it out for the first time, remember to subscribe to Collider Sports YouTube channel for all the sports goodness. Hey guys, it's Riley here. Let me tell you about the Riley Roundtable. You know it, right? It drops every Thursday on Collider Conversations, and I have guests from all across the space. John Roca, Gray Drake, Alexander Desplat came on at one point. We talk everything from movies, we talk about life, and everything in between. What do you want to hear? What do you want to talk about? It's the Riley Roundtable every Thursday on Collider Conversations. You get it there. Hi, I'm Koi Jandro, host of Collider Heroes, and I'm here to tell you we've got 20-minute episodes coming at you on Collider Video, on the YouTube, as you've always loved it. Plus, now we've got hour-long podcasts dropping every Thursday, so make sure to subscribe to the podcast because it's going to get even more sweaty on the podcast. Plus, every week we're going to try to get some very special guest interviews, all of the people that help shape these movies and TV shows you love. So, video, podcast, interviews all coming at you. Be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, guys. Stay sweaty. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsok, one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council, and I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursdays on the Collider video channel, and it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. A we celebrate Star Wars. Guests? We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. What's up, Collider fans? Ryan Satin here from ProWrestlingSheet.com, where you can find the top stories throughout the week in the world of professional wrestling. If you're a wrestling fan like myself, then you'd be doing yourself a disservice by not checking out all the shows we do every week on YouTube.com slash C slash Wrestling Sheet. In particular, on Wednesdays, we've got a SmackDown recap show hosted by John Roca and myself, where we pick apart and, and talk about every little thing that happened on the blue brand. So do yourself a favor and go subscribe at youtube.com slash C slash wrestling sheet. Hey guys, Riley here, and let me tell you about Rule of Two. You looking for a Star Wars fix? Well, Rule of Two is that show. It drops on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, as well as on Podcast One's Jedi Council feed. So go over there, subscribe, share it with your friends. It's hosted by myself and Mark Fernandez. We talk everything in the Star Wars universe with a lot of deep dives and a lot of conversations that go all in. You know what to do. Subscribe, join us there, and rise. Hey everyone, John Roca here, the host of Collider Mailbag. A new episode drops every Saturday and Sunday in your face and in your ears, answering the questions from you fans about the world of entertainment, film, and television. Me and great guests from our sphere do the best to answer your questions from Twitter, from Instagram, and of course, email as well, every Saturday and Sunday. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm Christian Harloff, I'm the host of Collider Jedi Council. We talk about everything Star Wars. It's movie news, it's canon, it's all of it. We take questions from you guys. How do you do it? Main channel, that's right, right here. Subscribe to this channel. But if you wanna just listen to it, you got the podcast feed too. Apple Podcasts, you can listen to it in your car. Do all of it. It's Star Wars, episode nine's coming out. And then after episode nine, you got TV shows. So we're gonna be your sports center for Star Wars. Do it, come on, be real. Hi, I'm Amy Dallin, one of the hosts of Collider Heroes. And starting right now, you can catch our show Tuesday nights with a new Collider Heroes and a longer Collider Heroes podcast where Koi and I are going to talk your ears off. You already know that's coming. So make sure to go to YouTube, subscribe, and find us on the Collider Heroes podcast feed for all of that sweaty goodness. The Witching Hour is all over Collider right now. You can listen to that horror film podcast with myself, with Haley Fouch. We talk about witchiness. We talk about slashers. We talk about space horror. You name it, all on that show on the Collider Factory feed. And on top of that, you can find an article all about Witching Hour every single Tuesday on Collider.com. Check it out. Get scared. Hopefully, you survive the Witching Hour. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, back on Collider Live, and we cannot tell you how excited we are right now in studio. Guys, 
both Cody and Brandy Rhodes are here. AEW, it's coming in hot October 2nd on TNT. All Elite Wrestling Dynamite, it debuts. You guys are doing a preview show on the first also, yes? Yeah, um, the, the countdown special. Awesome. So, yeah. look, man, we've been... It's, I feel you should give them their exact titles. We have Go one ahead. of the executive vice presidents oh, of yes. all, Elite, all Elite Wrestling and the chief branding officer. The only one. The, <laughs> oh, the, right, the only yeah. chief. Because it's like five executives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. hard for that girl. It's true. Yeah. Look, Cody, we've been talking about this uh, for a long time on this show, and one of the things we've been going back and forth on Twitter with Star Wars, our love for Star Wars, and then I didn't even know a lot about it until about a year and a half, two years ago when I started listening and hearing about AEW and what you guys have been doing. And I got to give you respect for what we were just talking about before you came in, because, and correct me if I'm wrong, you had a shot if you wanted to to, to go back to WWE, continue that yeah. route, and instead you said, no, I'm going to go on my own route. You built up big relationships, and here we are. You get yourself an investor. You go out on your own, and, and AEW now, it's going, not head-to-head, -head, we won't say, with WWE, but it's, it's, it's starting to cause this mm. fire in the industry. Yeah, I can't, and at this point, AEW just being announced, if October 2nd is our only show, say that's our only show, say we're not weekly on TNT, the business has gone through a change now because of AEW and because of the fandom that can't be undone. Right. Guys and girls now have the opportunity for more money. Guys and girls have the opportunity for a healthier schedule. It's just the best possible time. It is a perfect storm because around All In, when we did our own self-promoted show and we had the, the big sellout, at the end of the night, we thought not so much about starting a company. We thought, well, let's just do another one of these. Right. And it was Tony and him having this fear of influence and being, you know, the business acumen and the fact that he's a billionaire wrestling consumer, that's, I mean, these series of events that led us to it are absolutely nuts. I hope somebody writes a book about it one day. I hope it's a complimentary <laughs> yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. So nobody would have, so between yourself, the Bucks, or Megan, nobody would have ever thought of actually having a promotion. You guys are just like, we'll run these one-off shows. I, I didn't take his call. Really? I didn't, and I, I, <laughs> I didn't like deny him, but I just heard, hey, Tony wants to talk to you and thought, I've, um, you know, I grew up in the wrestling yeah. business. I've had so many people tell me, oh, I want to start a wrestling promotion, right. <laughs> including my dad, who just like threw $3 million in a hole in our backyard. That was essentially our wrestling promotion. It's just a, a risky venture. Right. Right. Um, Matt Jackson of the Young Bucks took that call. And then at Fridays in Tokyo, Japan is where we all decided, you know, we're going to do it. But we're what gonna, was, what was the selling this. point? What was the reason? Like you said, a lot of people had come up to you and had, had said this to you before. What was it about Tony that you said, no, no, wait a minute? This is the one. Two things. I went to see Tony. Uh, he hosted us at a Jags game, and I got to watch him manage and lead because he's a senior vice president for the Jags yeah. in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And when you're managing and leading NFL athletes at the level he was, but the way he was managing and right. leading them, I was just fly on the wall watching, so impressed with his management style. Yeah. And I, he was vetting us, but I was you know, vetting him in this moment too. And then the other factor of it all is myself, Matt, Nick, and Kenny, if we stick together, it's it's risky, but it's not as risky, if that right. makes any sense. We can be we can keep him responsible and Tony can keep us responsible. It's a really self aware checks and balances group. And with that checks and balances, you are an executive. You're behind the scenes. Both of you all are now watching the live program and you, Cody, as well as you as Brandy, being in ring performers, do you feel like that puts an extra level of pressure on you all? I mean it could. If, if if you're broken easily that yeah. way, I mean, because we, we do pride ourselves in that we listen to what the fans want. But at this stage in the game, there are some things where they just kind of have to let them play out because we've had four pay-per-views. We haven't had three months of television of, of you guys having no idea what's going on. So once the TV show starts to roll out and they start to see things week to week, I think that's going to really verify for them that, hey, what we said is true. These, these are trustworthy people putting this together, and, um, you know, the best stuff is what's going to continue to live. You mentioned the landscape changing and how this is great for all wrestlers and everybody involved. And actually, I have several friends in the WWE who behind the scenes have told me what a great opportunity AEW has given them so that they can negotiate more yeah. and so that they can uh, get better health, money, whatever it is. Do you have people coming up to you guys from WWE thanking you for what you guys are doing for their careers? Yeah, I, I've gotten a bunch of texts from talent who uh, weren't there when I was there, who knew talent, who I don't know. Um, wow. And probably that's the nicest thing ever is just to, to hear from there was a specific tag team that sent us a text that said thank you. Uh, we got a bigger deal than we ever expected. And 
we appreciate it because you know the fact that they thought we might go right they towards you guys. Yeah, sure. I tell people all the time because we have a great roster and and we're not there's not as many openings left. But I tell people all the time I'm like, hey, if you want WWE to pay you more money, just take a picture with my dog or right. something. <laughs> tweet something well, at us. Yeah, they're they're doing it. I want to talk about the roster real quick. You guys have a lot of established talent yourself, Cody. You got Jericho, Moxley, Spears, mm-hmm. Pac, Omega. You have so many established stars, but at the same time, you have a bunch of new stars who are new to fans mm-hmm. who may not be invested in the indies, who may not be invested in smaller circles. MJF, for one example, how do you guys expect to put these guys over? Because the other was already over. You got a character profile. I go out for every match as far as I actually treat every match as if the audience has never seen me before. Mm-hmm. I try to, in, in the match, sell who I am to them for the very first time. In this case, when it comes to MJF, Darby Allen, Luchasaurus, Jungle Boy, all that. That's why we've tried to do a lot on YouTube as far as shoulder content with these personal stories. We have to bring that to the TV as well, is these personal stories. Because wrestling entering action, which we're going big on bell to bell, is great. It's way better when you actually know who the people are and you have a reason to cheer for them. It's investment. It's yeah. In, it's investment. So that was another question. Because one of the things that was so attractive to me about, about AEW and Please, you guys will be able to speak on this better than what I've heard. But what I used to love about wrestling as a kid was that the titles meant something, mm. that rankings meant something, that you had to earn it. Like you can just show up in a storyline that day and say, oh, I'm going to fight for the title tonight. Why? Why? Because that's what we want to do tonight. And it just you lose you lose that attachment. Sure. Is that accurate? Are you guys going to be making it more like, you know, it's going to feel like the old school kind of pay-per-view, big event, title matches. Like There's going to be more to it? Yeah, the, the big fight feel, you can't just say it on commentary. Right. And all of a sudden, the crowd's like, yeah, it's a big pipe feel. You have to, has to actually mean something. Um, the, a really great thing that we're doing, we have only the four shows, so the numbers are low in terms of records and stats, but we're going off those. And we're not going to give you a fake general manager or a fake commissioner. It's very obvious who runs the company. So if there's a big title match that needs to be made, Tony Khan's going to make that title match. On you know He did it for Jericho and I. And as far as... The title is being rolled out. The tag title is being presented in this tournament. The fact that you've got to get through this tournament, all our titles would be treated, you know, no pun intended, as absolute gold. Unless you're a complete lunatic idiot and you get the title stolen or you forget it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we got it back. Yeah, talk, uh, we got talk, it back. I want to talk about one title in particular because this is a big thing you all have focused on. It's the women's title. And with that, the ex- inclusivity, and especially Nyla Rose, who has made history with you all. How do you continue to go forward with that? Um, I don't know if we've told the real story with Nyla Rose. Um, I'm cool telling the real story if it's not out there. Um, when we hired Nyla Rose, we did not know she was transgender. We thought she was one of the best wrestlers we ever saw. That was that. It later was revealed to us that she was transgender, and that's great. Quite a However, night on Twitter. How yeah. was it revealed to you guys? Via the, the Internet. Oh. Uh, I was getting <laughs> floods of tweets um, from people of the LGBTQ community just saying, thank you, thank you, and I'm saying, for what? <laughs> what right. did I do? Yeah. And then I found that out, and then, you know, she, she opened up to me and talked about it, and, and that was fantastic. However, it's nothing to do with anything because she's just a fantastic competitor right. she was brought on board uh i think kenny omega was the one to, to find her and say hey take a look yeah. at her did kenny know or, or, or no no he didn't know. No, none of us knew okay. which, nobody knew which so. I, I really like <laughs> right. there's no attempt to just check a box right. for the sake and i'm glad you said that because a lot of people had come out and said you guys were just trying to pander having nyla given the fact nyla is a credible talent yeah. and people were like oh they're just trying to do this and check these boxes off right. but not knowing now and people know and it's the world now knowing that you all had no clue until she until the internet basically told you and then she told you yeah yeah and um you know that that's all you know that's her story um that's not something that i like to talk about for her because it's her story and if if it's something she's comfortable talking about and telling um that's great and you know hey if she wins the world title next week and she wants to talk about that being you know a part of her life wonderful if not cool right there's been a lot of conversation about the Olympics and whether or not trans people should be able to compete uh, if you're a trans woman with in the women's division or, or whatnot. Was that ever a conversation after you guys found out whether or not she should be able to compete in that way? No, not we one never, that we were. Yeah, we not one that we that. were having. 
Yeah. You, you see that that chatter on the internet, and that's one of those things that Tony's been really great about. It's 2019. Right. Yeah. We're not even gonna we're not even gonna humor it. We're well, not in even some gonna promotions, hear it. we we do intergender wrestling where that is um, looked upon highly. So I don't see how you could look at that. And, and say that that is okay, and then say that, you know, a transgender woman or man wanting to wrestle right. is not okay. And you talk about, like, promotions like that. I've seen Candice LeRae back when I was on the Indies, well, I'm back on, had her have some of the greatest matches ever with guys. And no one ever complains about those, like you just said. And so I feel like you guys have established a solid women's roster. And I see it's only going to grow. You all brought back Awesome Kong. How did that I come? brought back Awesome Kong. You brought back... Yeah. Hi, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Brand, well, excuse me, Cody. I, Brand, I, I, you brought back... This, this actually spawns off into two questions. I want to know how you got Awesome Kong. Then I really want to know the conversation. If you've told it already, I apologize. I haven't heard it, but the Bret Hart showing up uh, in, at that event and how that all went down. So if we can talk sure. about how you got Awesome Kong and then Bret Hart, please. Okay, I will try to be brief about this because this is like... Really important to me. So um, the first person I ever did anything in the ring with in my entire life was Awesome Kong. I was uh, at FCW. She had been brought to FCW to start working into the role that she was going to be. And um, no one was talking to her. So I I started talking to her, and she said, hey, you want to learn something? I said, great, yeah, sure. And she taught me my first move. (laughs) Um, From that, uh, Cody's dad, Dusty, uh, he was doing all of the character work at the time. He saw, you know, some kind of relationship between us that that would be cool. And I thought, yeah, that that would be amazing. I was supposed to manage her um, after she went, you know, on her huge rampage, wrecking through the locker room and killing all the women. I was supposed to be the only person who could talk to her. Never happened because of circumstances, and um, it's always been in my heart to happen. So I went out on a limb and reached out to her on this. I mean, she hadn't been in the ring for, what, like eight years? <laughs> so I was like, hey, it could be a big no. You know, she's doing glow. Um, but she was super excited about it. She'd been following everything, and I was just like, great, let's yeah. do this. Um, she was scared, right. too. The day of the show, she revealed to me, she goes, do you think they'll remember me? Oh, and man. I just laughed. I said, wait <laughs> wait until your Tron yeah. hits. And when I'm standing on the stage there, I feel it That's shaking. Cool. Yeah. And there's that clip that lives with me, like with my head back just laughing. It was just because it was a, such a great moment for her, for everybody. So. Yeah. And as far as Brett? Brett was very um, simple. It was just a, a nice phone call where I explained to him what we're doing um, and how it's not intended. I didn't, I didn't want to put anyone in a situation where I don't want you to get, you know, I don't know if the word trouble, but I didn't want you to have any issues with WWE. Right, because it was just like a couple what, a couple weeks right. after yeah. the Hall of Fame. This Bret Hart is, is the excellence of execution. Right. He's a lot of the wrestlers on our roster are, are Bret Hart guys. You know you were like a Bret Hart guy or you were Shawn Michaels yeah, yeah. guy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of them are Bret Hart guys. And he really loves kind of the familial aspect, my brother and I, and be, being in the family, the business. And he just I respect him so much. But it, was, it wasn't a difficult thing. He was really excited to be part yeah. of it. And for us, the day went by so fast that that was the moment where I really thought, this is a huge surprise yeah. that we are, it's just happening. And we're like, there's other surprises on the show, but this is a huge surprise. And it was really validating. He rubbed up against us and he helped vindicate the company in a, in a really strong way. So I hope we see more of Brett. He's just, he's just the best. And Me too. Really great to work with. Uh, I was a Brett Hart guy myself. But um, a couple things I want to ask you because, you, like you said earlier in the interview, that when you have the, the the wrestlers on both sides that now you guys are creating a lot of opportunity for, the same goes into competition. And like we saw in in one of the pay per views where you smashed the throne, and and we've 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 oh, done yeah. that. We've had Did some. You do that? <laughs> oh, yeah. We've had a couple. We've had a couple of, of comments back and forth. Maybe a couple of gifts sides. about that. Maybe so. <laughs> so let me ask you about NXT because NXT now going up uh, same time against uh, you guys. Yeah. And the thing with NXT is that a lot of people are saying they were even before you guys were coming around, that NXT was the most exciting thing that WWE has right now. Sure. Do you think that their answer, I mean, I'm sure that the easy, easy answer is yes here, but that this is their answer to you guys by putting NXT directly up against you guys? Well, I do think that NXT going directly up against us and then switching to two hours the week we debut yeah. right. is 100% reactionary. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a smart move or not a smart move. It's just 100% reactionary, whereas I like that. Yeah. Because we were always going to be on TNT. This was always the time slot. We just have to focus on 
what we're doing. We can't, we can't, if we become a reactionary brand, I think that's a bad call. Right. I think we got to focus on, especially building our new cast, because what, because what happens when you become reactionary is it becomes about, well, the Undertaker is going to be teaming with Johnny Gargano, and then all of a sudden we're, tr- you know, you're, you're grasping for pieces of nostalgia and you're playing the wrong notes versus what I think we already have, which is a product that people want to see. And on top of grabbing the establishing the cast, I'm sorry about that, establishing new fans to wrestling who may have fallen off. Sure. How do you intend to grab those? Oof. I mean, yeah. That's that's the question. And that we had a we had a lady come up to us in the airport after Chicago and, and she used the best term ever. She said, I just wanted you guys to know I'm a returner. That's awesome. And I thought, oh yeah, yeah that's awesome. I love that. I yeah. I want to meet all the returners. Yeah. I think the idea of a little bit more adult oriented, sports centric, violent wrestling show appears to the shadow market, appears, you know, appeals to the lapse fan. I think naturally that will bring them in for weeks one, weeks two, but what's gonna keep them is if they have a human connection. If they feel like they can reach across the barricade, if they if they know you. I've been really lucky because I don't have to play anything. At this point, I couldn't even play a character. Everything I do out there is 100% real at this point. I'm really the executive vice president. Mm-hmm. Dustin's yeah. really my brother. I really am putting my whole ass on the line for this company. Like, So it's great. They can feel that. They can understand that. Well, um, you did that, and you did that in a big way. And this is a two-part question here because the chair shot that I know you got a lot of stuff for uh, on Twitter or wherever, where it came from. Yeah. I want to ask you how you I mean, like, where, how, when you took this shot to the head because you talk about the ultra violence and you are one of the, the main executive in this company. Mm. What was the conversation like there? Did you know he was going to do it? Did you? How did you feel about that? Um, so one of the best things about the company is very, everybody's very trusting of each other. We we trust each other's judgments with this and that and the other. So it's not super micromanaged of every moment. I need to know everything that's happening. Um, the shocking moment to me in the whole thing was the the entire thing played out and I got in the ring and I had my moment with Aubrey, the referee, protecting me because Spears is crazy. And um, when, when all of that happened, finally I looked at him and there's blood everywhere. And that I did not know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm confused and, and, and very upset. And, and The lip got me. The lip yeah. of the chair. Yeah. I, Tony went out and, and you know put out a statement properly as he did. Uh, we we went to great pains to take back chair shots by dis- <laughs> by by soldering and ironing out yeah. a proper way to do it. And the lip of it, we just we just didn't get all of it. As and, Tony and, likes to say, yeah. pilot error. And uh, that was day one but, and done of the props department. But I was totally okay. <laughs> In, in doing it, and, and here is here is why. Captain America is hitting people in the head with his shield, and no one's screaming concussion. No one is screaming CTE. No one's making any of these references. If you're going to hold us to a certain standard in, at this point in 2019, if we are talking to you as far as an entertainment brand, then, then you can't hold us to an older standard, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to take chair shots back for wrestling however i don't i don't think it was a success uh, <laughs> and i think maybe maybe that was the last head shot in uh in AEW for uh with the chair because of fan reaction well it maybe because of fan reaction and the 12 staples in the the back of my head um <laughs> right. th- thankfully i didn't have a concussion but yeah let's say uh fan reaction there's something to shock and there's something to polarizing but also the best thing you can be as a wrestler or a wrestling company in this case right now is is to listen to them. Right. Um, I put a statement out yesterday about John Cena told me when I wrestled him in some live event like 2009, he got really upset with me because the crowd was clapping and I didn't allow him to get up from the hold he was in. And he explained to me whenever they do anything, if they make any type of noise, stomp their feet, anything, if you don't give them something, they'll make less noise the next time, then they won't make any noise. And it's a nice comparison, you know, to the overall picture that when they ask for something you, you give you, you you need to give them that and especially if they overwhelmingly ask if the world the wrestling world doesn't want to see chair shots to the head fair enough where is the line for you because you talked about not being reactionary yeah. that's something you guys don't want to be but also you got to listen to your fans and hear what they're saying well in in that light I feel like we challenge the fans to be diplomatic about what they actually really do want. Because if you're just looking for reactions or or a day of Twitter activity, you could very well forge something 
into existence or non-existence that you didn't intend to because like we said it your voices do count so if you're just having a bad day and rampaging around about something that you really don't care about and then you wonder down the line oh i kind of liked that what happened well you you tried to cancel it and we did yeah (laughs) we've got to be real careful i'm sure you guys know about this you got to be real careful about if three people three uh tweet 300 times it's still three people. Right. Mm-hmm. You got to. We got to find the way to actually judge the metric. And Turner has this wonderful team where you can actually look at. Oh man, these people really liked Luchasaurus. Yeah. Like, you know, you you can actually Majority. get a good feel for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, one of the things you're talking about listening to fans. One of the things that I've seen a lot of, and and not that you're going to reveal it even if it, if it came out. But as far as conversations with CM Punk, I mean, there's rumors that that you know he's been around yeah. a couple of shows and stuff. What what's the possibility that we ever see him on an AEW show? Fifty <sighs> fifty. I sure. I, I, really, I really like yeah. uh, Phil, and he was really nice to me when um, I was in OVW as kind of a leader. He was a locker room leader, and then he had such a successful run in WWE, and I never really had an adversarial relationship with him. I know he doesn't like when we discuss him, but I I think I even explained it to him once. A lot of people ask us right. about you. I asked that. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to say I don't want to say no comment, and then I I think. He, I just don't think he knows. Perhaps, and perhaps he doesn't want to be involved with wrestling at all anymore. And if that's the case, no big deal. You right. gave you gave us your body. You gave us this body of work. And CM Punk was an awesome wrestler, but he did kind of make us look like like kind of dumbasses, saying we sent him a text offer. I'm sure we texted him, but we also called him. Someone also met you in a coffee shop. We made we made genuine efforts, mm-hmm. but in this case. 2019 it's been quite some time away from the ring we got to focus on who really wants to be on board with us versus going out and finding someone who perhaps doesn't really want to be part of this did you ask him why he did that why he said that you guys sent him the text and kind of made you guys look not as the way you wanted to look i didn't really communicate with him further um after that i expected to see him at starcast he gave this really great uh uh live show that he did with mike johnson where he was really you know great with his answers i'm sure we'll run into each other at some point if he ever wanted to come be part of this and he had the passion to come back to wrestling that door is always open no ego no situation would ever prevent us from having him come in because the fans have never given up on punk ever right it's crazy right one of the things i want to ask you guys about real quick is we talk about the talent you have in front of the camera, but behind the scenes, you guys have incorporated some legends as far as getting Arn Anderson, <laughs> Dean Malenko, people to help build the company, Billy Gunn. How does that feel, having that veteran leadership who's been in TV production with you all now to help you all grow from just your first show to hopefully your second and more? I can say that having Dean Malenko around, for example, man, he... <laughs> Jim Ross and Dean Malenko, when we're in these production meetings and we're talking, you can see how much knowledge they have, and you can see that as soon as that production meeting's over, they're going to come find you and ask you about 20 different things and maybe suggest 20 different ways you could do it. We've really leaned into Dean in terms of TV production. Mm-hmm. We're not going to pretend that we've ever done this before. We're, this is We've done these pay-per-views, yes, but this is our first time going on TNT. Right. But also we want the opportunity to do it. So Dean and Jim, these guys have been great about – like to see him more down the road. I actually think Arn could be a terrific manager. Arn was one of the nicest – but when I was a writer for WWE, he was the nicest human. He was the nicest guy to me. Like he was welcoming because when you come in there, uh, especially, I mean, you know, when yeah. you're not – when I came in from L.A., they were like, who is this guy? Why is he? And he was he's welcoming. He was he introduced me to a lot of people. He's he's one of those people that I saw as you saw them talking to all the wrestlers. Yeah. Respect. So having people like that helps tremendously. But Brandy, I want to ask you for the returners that are watching right now, right? <laughs> so when you guys debut next week, if they haven't had if they haven't thought about coming back and now because of this interview they want to, what should they expect to see next week? Um really AEW is for everyone. It's kind of a grab bag of everything for everybody, and that's even within divisions. So if you're just speaking about, say, the women's division, it's not just one way you shake it at the women's division. You have people like me. You have people like Britt Baker. You have the Joshi wrestlers. You've got Nyla Rose. You've got people who – that's literally four different styles right there, and that's not even half the roster, and that's women. So when you look and you've got people like Orange Cassidy and you have Luchasaurus and then you have classic people like Chris Jericho and Cody, um, there's something in that for everyone. And then not only that, but there's just something super contagious about the AEW environment in general. 
um, I'm really hoping that people are able to see from just watching on TV what the Capital One Center is like next week. Right. Um, it's going to be an atmosphere that you're not able to describe, especially when you're in it. But I really hope that translates on screen as to how excited people are, how much fun people are having, how involved people actually are in the show. And, um, I mean, to, to me, that's, that's what ropes me. Yeah. for various things or that's what if there's something that I had paid attention to for instance I'm a huge horror fan but I do have moments where I fall off and then something completely grabs me and I'm fully back in and I'm you know searching Netflix for everything I can consume that's related to horror I think it's like that for these people um, maybe they've had their little bit of time away or they forgot about it or you know seasonal things have changed in their life but uh, I hope that if they turn the TV on next week they're back in it again, yeah. and they're, it's a, every Wednesday. We've got to do this. The next thing you know, every pay per view I've got to be at. I got to check that Starcast thing out. I want to go meet Brandy and Cody. Please come meet me. I like people. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it, but I do. Well, you know, and as, unfortunately, we're going to lose you guys here in a second. But at one point, we got to get you on Jedi Council. We got to talk Star Wars, with you, man. For oh, sure. Yeah, man. I know you're a Star Wars hardcore, big time. Um, we were just in Batu. We got a little oh, yeah? Rancor. Beer flight board. I was super Ooh. excited. Tony Schiavone got one too. Oh, really? That's amazing. <laughs> uh, and Josh is going to be so upset. We didn't get to his one question that he needed. I know the one. Well, the one he wanted. He wanted to know what your thoughts were on whether or not you thought the XFL was going to succeed again. Coming back. That is the question, Makuga. Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah, yeah. He uh, needed to know. No clue. No clue. I mean, no right now, the NFL is the greatest. Yeah. Per- business and then under that you're competing with the ncaa in the first place with d1 football i no yeah i like the star wars question i know, I know, I know that's true uh, but the, the last it's thing though too is anyway. what we what we do, all do have in common also i think one of the things uh running the movie trivia schmodown what i what i have been lucky enough to one of our our, our post interview is jen sturger and you guys have been using Jen Sturger a lot on yeah. your shows. Um, yeah, will we be seeing a lot more of her on on these shows too? Ooh. Because well, because she's just so good, and what she's got, she gets the drama out there. She gets it, and she is really passionate about you all. Her and I have oh, a man. lot of conversations. She loves what you all are doing. Hold on, I'm about to text her and be like, "What's this pitch here?" Because tell, everybody's, tell a Jay <laughs> tell a Jay everybody's building. <laughs> yeah, no. No. She, well, I like she, Jen, yeah. and all the older the older gentlemen in the company really <laughs> like Jim. Like, yeah. like, like Jim Ross always. Like, yeah. Yeah, Not Jim surprised. Never. Not I've never seen Jim Ross do more podcasts in they, the last. Uh, yeah. He said like twenty with Jim. <laughs> he, <laughs> he brings it up pretty regularly. Is she yeah. a co-host. Yeah. 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 It's fun though. Like, yeah. yeah, I would love her to be Tony Schiavone's co-host in the Control Center that awesome. we do that for the Road Two shows. That's my goal. But I got to get Jen to Atlanta to film those. So. Cool. We're working on it. Yeah. Well, guys, you're working on a lot of stuff, and we're so excited for the show. We'll be watching. This is this is awesome, what you guys have done in general for the business. Thank you very much, and congratulations and good luck. Brandy Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, check it out, guys. Next week, All Elite Wrestling Dynamite, and it's going to be on TNT. It is 8 o'clock, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, guys. So thank you again for everybody joining us here today, both Josh McCuga, Jay Washington, Roxy Stryer, Cody Hall, and Cody Rhodes and Brandy Rhodes. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow.